so um we're going to now go into uh introductions everyone i would like to welcome you all into the hippie to be round table i've even st i've already stopped counting uh which edition of the hippie to be round table this is but i am happy to have you here we have some old favorites returning like supreme we have some new faces we haven't been here in a while like hans and we've got of course some veterans of the round table like demon mama and the uh third time's the charm hopefully for xander hall until he crashes and his computer catches on fire no i'm good i got discord now discord is based Wonderful. whereby is cringe yep now uh, or you're just technologically a little you know a little mm, boomer a little bit of a little boomer but i'm we too also busy have people, chasing milfs many people here based. who be based the, we have too many people here we have a lot of people here who's going to be in the rumble next friday which it's is going to be 8 p.m eastern standard time 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That rumble will decide the next hippie dippy champion as Vosh broke the rules. The little hooligan. Little, little, little uh, Hey, thank you, Seculoid. Had, I mean, for Jimmy the raid. was right thank about you. Vosh. We all know it. Anyway, we have Demon Mama who's going to be on there. Xander Hall is going to be on there. Uh, Nacho is going to be on there. Um, Sprouticus is going to be on there. Um, I believe that's all of them who are going to be on there, unless, of course, you impress me tonight. Now, we're going to go into introductions as we go around the room. We're going to start in the top right, uh, left-hand corner with American Nacho. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm American Nacho. I play video games, uh, turn political streamer. Um, I'm right-leaning, center-right. Uh, I identify more with like a traditional Republican, maybe someone like a Tom Dewey or like an Eisenhower. And uh, I'm fighting an uphill battle right now, all right? We're trying to change minds in the Republican Party. I do a lot of stuff here locally, and uh, that's my main focus for now. Happy to and see people in, yeah. you, happy to see people find involved in Twitch. local politics. Oh, yeah. You can find him on Twitch, American Nacho. And he has a lovely uh, merch shirt. I saw it the other day. Gonna throw yes, it I over do. to uh, Connor. Yeah, hi guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I'm a military veteran, law enforcement veteran, a science fiction nerd, and a politics nerd. Um, I like yelling at people on the internet, which is why I'm here. Um, I identify politically as centrist or center right, so you'll probably see me throwing out those both ways. And that's pretty much it. Super stoked to be here. Wonderful. Now we're going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Dylan, for having me on again. By the way, I absolutely love your new glasses. Um, I haven't seen them, seen you wearing them. They might not be completely new, but they're amazing. My name is Demon Mama. I am a uh, YouTube uh, political edutainer, um, and I am the queen of the imps, my lovely, lovely fans. Um, you've probably heard of me, you've probably seen me on a panel before, but if you haven't, come check out all my stuff at demonmama.com. Um, and I have all my links there, so you can find me, demonmama.com. Uh, thank you so much for having me on again. I'm really looking forward to getting, uh, getting into the pit fight here. Lovely. Uh, and for everybody at home, once again, this is also known as a promotional show for next week, which is going to be a huge show. Again, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to crown the new Hippie Dippy Champion. We have a lot of people booked for that show. We have Xander Hall booked. We have Hunter Avalon booked. We have Destiny booked. We have Demon Mama booked. It's going to be a action-packed show. Now I'm going to throw it over to Hans to introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Hans, Hans of Harkir. Uh, I, in Twitch politics, uh, newest and most bestest and burliest uh, political himbo. Uh, when I'm not posting uh, thirst traps and memes on Twitter, I'm playing Pokemon or reading the news or hosting the second greatest uh, panel in Twitch politics on Saturdays. Uh, so check that out and uh, check me out because I'm big and I'm beautiful and I want everyone to be big and beautiful as well. So. True, now, I, I know you have your panel on Saturdays, but I hope you be brought your best equipment today because you were breaking out a lot in that intro. Uh, oh, that was... lot of... oh, no, yeah. what happened? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll fix myself. Good, good. Must be the CIA. Place. Same group that's funding Vosh these days. We're going to throw it over to Sprouticus. Hey guys, I'm Sprout. I'm the Sprouticus. You can find me on uh, Twitch and Twitter underneath the same name. It is the Sprouticus. I'm a constitutionalist conservative. Uh, been streaming since early this year, so I'm excited to get into this. I'm excited to uh, talk some this issues fun, out in here, and uh, maybe we'll come to a conclusion, or maybe we'll just yell at each other. Stay tuned to find out. Wonderful. He is going to be one of the many people uh, on the show next Friday. Now we're going to throw it over to Supreme. I'm Supreme. If you know, you know. Wonderful. How's Chicken? She's meowing right next to me. Wonderful. Going to throw it over you. to... Oh, I miss her too. We're gonna throw it over to the Turk. Hey guys, I'm Turk. I am a science and tech streamer, YouTuber, and uh, I 
dabble in politics every once in a while. Uh, just to let Dylan know, my going hourly rate for this is $15 an hour, so make sure uh, you make it billable to the turn. Well, uh, I use the Pinkertons, and there'll be no unionization in my show. I'm a <laughs> liberal elitist, and so, of course, that means I am hypocritical. Uh, now we're going to throw it over to Xander Hall. Hello, uh, my name is Xander Hall. I'm a political streamer and YouTuber. I guess you would probably put me somewhere around Sock Dem, probably call me a leftist if we're talking about um, more contemporary real-life politics rather than the internet. I'm also technologically illiterate and have trouble with whereby, so I want to thank Dylan for hosting this one on Discord so I can attend, because I've been wanting to do this for a while. And um, yeah, I'm excited to do this. I've been wanting to do more panel shows for a while, so I'm hyped. Wonderful. Do you think you have chances of winning next Friday on the Hippy Dippy Championship? I mean, you could be the belt holder. Only one person's ever held that belt, and that was Vosh. I'm gonna bring home that trophy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick their lily white asses. We're gonna win. We're gonna go in there. The doom music is gonna start playing. I'm not gonna be trapped in there with them. They're gonna be trapped in there with me. In your Wonderful. dreams. Right? In, in truth, yeah. what's actually going to happen is that the milf in hunter. In truth, I'm gonna get my lily in white. In truth, the, kicked, but we'll yeah, 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 the so milf hunter is about to become the milf be hunted. Okay, okay. Hunted. Okay. okay, look, all of you will be able to shoot shoot promos over this week, which we will use to promote. So actually, all of you should start thinking about that because we will be using two promos to promote the event. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot. I should, now, I'll shoot a promo. For we're going sure, to go through some rules. Number one, no slurs. If it is, if you think it's a slur, just don't say it. Okay, please. We are a TOS friendly stream and would like to keep our jobs. Nothing against terms of service. If I'm talking at any point, that means you stop talking. That means you immediately stop talking. I don't care if it's a diatribe. Now the thing is, with the thing that's great about Discord, not only can you hear me, but you can also see my thing light up. So you have basically no excuse for not of stopping unless you're not actually looking at the Discord. Which, if that's the case, it's kind of your fault. I'm only going to do that to moderate. I'm not going to go there and throw in my opinion on immigration randomly. I'm not going to go in there and give you my opinion on the in Insurrection Commission. I'm just doing it to moderate. Besides that, um, also, everybody was going to have a one, minute and one, uh, a one minute intro and outro segment for each topic. So you can have uninterrupted time. Mm. This is so those that have more difficulty getting their way into the conversation at least have uh, a certain amount of time allotted to them to speak. Also, let's say that you are not very good at roundtables. Now, this is not the centerpiece of the roundtable, but if you have difficulty with this, which all of you have experience on roundtables to some extent, so it shouldn't be that much, you can raise your hand and I will write your name down on the holy notebook true and eventually we will get over to you please do not rely on this too heavily though this should be seen as a last resort for you where you just feel like you can't get your way in there and i will eventually bring it over to you please be patient is there any questions about the rules or anything that i have yet to clarify uh dylan is my mic working better now oh uh, your mic is working better now wonderful yes, it is. Great. let's see it now we're going on to the I like first Xander. topic now. There is one last thing I need to say that we actually had a huge news update today, which is huge for the online internet space, maybe not so much in the IRL internet space. Nick Fuentes was banned off of Twitter. And so people are kind of going back and hey, forth. Hey, thank right you, now Manic Jack. Uh, let me know about the censorship. Patreon. Would any of I'll you, get you be a nice opposed title. to replacing one of the topics with that, considering it is breaking news? If not, we can just stick to the ones uh, what was the breaking we've news? already allotted. I'm down I'm for down. switching. Can it be the last one? Uh, <laughs> my apologies. I, I didn't hear the, the topic. Would you mind restating that? Nick Fuentes was banned off Twitter, Twitter censorship, etc., etc. You could probably. Oh, I'd be perfectly fine with discussing that, but these topics are great. I, I'm fine with whatever. Kirk, you said something? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, you could probably merge it in with the insurrection one since he was uh, there. Maybe. Or just replace it because we had, we've had insurrection debates for the past like month. So just replace that one with this. Then it could be more interesting at least. I mean, Fair enough. Does that, anybody have. Oh, I wouldn't want to replace the. I don't want to replace the the insurrection talk. That one's real interesting. Very inconvenient for our well, Republican friends. Which, which one do we want to? We've, I, had, it, we've I, had this conversation for a month, Demon Mama. Okay. It's not like okay. Okay. Can we do that? Can we replace I, immigration. I. Okay. I think we can go to. Wait, wait, wait. Let's let's probably replace immigration because there's nothing in the news, particularly around the issue of immigration. Does anybody have any? Sounds perfect. To that? Sounds perfect. Besides yeah. the nope. fact that I Nancy guess. Pelosi still hasn't been to the still hasn't been to the border, you know. Hey, I did a lot of research. As a border state resident, I demand that we talk about immigration. Okay, well, well, so I'm going to have to, I guess, make an executive decision here since there's no agreement. Um, and I guess my, uh, my decision is that what we're going to do is we're going to move the Insurrection Commission to the bonus topic. And if we get to it, we get to it. 
Does anybody have a problem with that? Fair enough. Okay. Sounds good. So, let's start with the first one then. Nick Fuentes was banned off of Twitter. <sighs> he was banned. He's gone. He's been donezoed. Now, I will leave my personal opinions of the man at the door and ask you, is there a problem with him getting banned off Twitter specifically, but as a more, prob uh, as a more broader topic, censorship on the platform? Are conservatives being censored? Or are lefties being censored? Or is this just a more broader example of censorship on the platform known as Twitter? Uh, I know many of you did not come here prepared for this, so uh, I won't be too angry if you don't have something prepared. And you want to be don't worry, Slapdars. I do so, inhale. I promise uh, you. I want to give people time to think, so is there anybody who already knows their position? Slap position. Ours, I I'll promise you, you I know how to smoke. Thank okay. you. Turk was first, or throw to him. Yeah, so as we've learned here in the leftist realm that uh, Twitter is a private company and they have the ability to ban whoever they want if they violate their terms of service. So yes, I'm completely okay with them banning uh, somebody that they deem has violated terms of service. You know, it's up to the debate if he did or did not. Uh, given his track record, he probably deserved it. Uh, but going into the broader question, like Dylan said, uh, there is being censorship on all, all the different fronts. It's not just a Republican thing, us crying wolf or anything. It's happening on the left as well. It's happening on a lot of different uh, social media platforms. And as a tech uh, person, I find it uh, kind of sad because this is where we're supposed to be able to openly share ideas and concepts and have debate. And if companies are going to be silencing people they don't agree with, that's a bad thing. And we do want to celebrate uh, freedom of speech. Wonderful. And Connor, be sure to mute when you like close and open doors and stuff. We're going to throw it over next to Xander Hall. Uh, yeah, so this is actually something that's pretty close to me right now because I recently got a strike, a false strike on my channel. So I understand that there are times where it can feel scary to have TOS like this, where uh, YouTube, Twitter, whatever social media network can just decide to uh, ban you, and then there's not really much you can do. That could be your career on the line. I'm very in favor of Nick Fuentes' banning. I'm in favor of TOS and just generally being able to ban people who act... Uh, in certain ways on these platforms, but only whenever that TOS is applied accurately and fairly. If you're breaking the TOS that's set forth that you agreed to, you should be banned. If you're banned for a reason other than that, and there is no more elaboration, I think that's worth getting up in arms about. I do not think this is the case with Nick Fuentes, but I do think these platforms deserve to have this right as long as it is applied equally and correctly and accurately. Okay, now I'm going to throw it over to Sprouticus. Okay, so I think that uh, I, I think that the companies that are going to call themselves the uh, the new public square um, should should uh, then for uh, since they're the new public square follow what the freedom of speech says and the freedom of speech is there for uh, for tweets or for comments that are offensive if your if your speech does not offend anyone then you don't need the protections of the first amendment because no one's going to be upset that you said something but it's when your tweets or something you say something that offends somebody or that disagrees with somebody in power that is when you need the protection of the first amendment and in order to keep the first amendment we need to keep the most hideous of speech i do not agree with nick fuentes i a lot of what nick fuentes does i find absolutely disgusting but that is my personal opinion. He is still allowed to. He is still allowed to. He is still allowed to say what he wants to say, no matter how. No matter how much I might find it disgusting, and that's the beauty of the First Amendment, because the everyone is allowed to have a discussion, right? So everyone's allowed to talk, and with everyone being allowed to talk, this then this then opens up the marketplace of ideas, because at some point there might be something that is seen as bad, such as not having slavery which later on can be seen as good. I'm not saying Nick Fuentes is that person, but there can be that what? flip in what society sees as good and what society sees as, sees as bad, sorry, and it what? can just take a flip. Um, and so with that being said, I think that we should continue to push for the First Amendment to be applied um, when you're talking about the public square and continue to push for people to be able to say what they're going to say either way. Um, and if you don't like it, block the person. Okay, next I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I find this uh, topic very interesting because it seems to um, reveal like people's general positions about an understanding of freedom of speech. 
Um, I, I, uh, with regard to Nick Fuentes, Nick Fuentes is still absolutely free to discuss whatever he wants uh, anywhere except for on Twitter and any other um, company that has decided that they don't want him on there. Um, I think that it would uh, undermine the function of the internet as it currently stands to demand that fir full First Amendment protections are extended to uh, everyone on every platform. I mean, for example, what if you had like a, uh, a crocheting board and um, you were just trying to talk about crocheting, but you had people coming in and constantly spamming threads about um, how they think slavery is good or whatever. Um, that would ruin the space. Companies, like it or not, need to have the ability to control their space. And as long as they're setting out those rules in a fair and just manner, I think that that's perfectly fine. Um, the thing here that we're not really dealing with is, is a First Amendment issue. What we're dealing with here is whether or not corporations have the right to do that and how they go about doing that. I think there's a lot to be said about TOSs. I have a lot of criticisms for the TOS of a lot of these websites, but I don't think that we can outright denounce their right to remove someone who they believe is toxic to their space um, be on First Amendment grounds. This is not in this case, in my opinion, a First Amendment issue at all. Um, I do think that there's a big issue with uh, censorship of speech. My channel has been hit multiple times, falsely, mind you, um, uh, on YouTube, on Twitch, and on Twitter, interestingly. Um, so I have a lot of issues with the way that they enforce the TOS, which is usually automated, and there's no human involvement. But I don't think this is a First Amendment issue, and I don't think we should pretend that it's a First Amendment issue. It does a disservice to the actual discussion. Muted, of course, professional streamer. Now we're going to throw it over to Connor. Yeah, I was um, muted. So I, I think wait, the, I was muted. Spartacus brings up an an interesting thought experiment that we could do that I, I think has to be the logical ex, uh, extension of anybody who says that oh, free okay, speech, okay. oh, okay, um, okay. <clears throat> free speech uh, prescription should apply to the internet space. Uh, weirdly enough, I think I could potentially agree with this, but what I think would need to be done is uh, we would need to have the same kind of speech codes that you have in public. So for instance, if you do uh, threatening or harassing speech, which I would include uh, repeatedly misgendering somebody as harassing speech, uh, could that be potentially criminal? And then the, the cops literally come to your house and arrest you. Um, if uh, somebody doxes you, publishes your uh, personal information, um, is that something that could be criminal? Uh, if they do stalking, could that be criminal? And should these be uh, enforced cross border? Uh, basically meaning that if somebody in the state of Florida threatens somebody in the state of New York and they say, hey, I'm going to come to your house and shoot you, um, should the uh, cops, basically, regardless of whether or not they think that that threat is credible, um, should that fall under a stalking statute, as it would if that person lived in the same city or lived in an, an adjacent state? Um, so I, I think that's a whole can of worms that if we want to follow the, the free speech prescription, um, I think we should probably run down some of those uh, thought tangents. Um, I do kind of go with the TOS argument just for like uh, ease of manageability. I think that if we went with the free speech codes, it would be the Wild West. And then on top of that, we would very quickly find out uh, exactly what the limits of free speech are, because basically we would have cops knocking on doors countrywide, policing the Internet behavior of Americans, um, which is, I think, something that people don't want, which is not currently uh, that's not currently necessary under the TOS private market uh, private market model. I'll leave it there. Okay, next is gonna be American Nacho. Um, yeah, so basically um, I, I, I'm kind of with, uh, I think a few other people now have basically said that, that they should be able to ban people um, according to their TOS or for whatever reason. I'm kind of on the private business ownership side on this. I think that it, it's their business, it's their call, like you can, uh, kick people out of your stores for like no shirt, no shoes, no service, whatever. Um, I think part of this goes to there's like a couple solutions, but maybe one is to like reword the part of uh, Section 230. It's like uh, C subsection A or something, where it's like platforms can remove content that is obscene, lewd, lavicious, or otherwise objectionable or something like that. So if we can define or or kind of like reword that uh, to to understand what what otherwise objectionable is, or um, provide an option that is basically free reign and that would be like the ups of uh or the usps of uh social media this government provided a hellscape of free speech and whatever you want to say whenever you want to say it because um although we still have our first amendment right to basically gather and protest and speak our piece the town square isn't really the best place to to actually 
be heard anymore and it's it's pretty clear that the internet is the place to be uh, if we want uh, lots of voices to hear us or if we want to feel like we're being heard so yeah that's basically it got it i don't and really that... care about Nick being banned got you we're throwing it over to supreme um yeah i think that nick fuentes being banned off twitter is actually really shocking and uh and it's it's kind of horrifying and i think it sends a really ominous message and i don't see a lot of people speaking on it from this angle but what what it basically what it says nick fuentes being banned on twitter uh it makes a very strong statement that you can be nick fuentes who's basically a neo-nazi and say the stuff that nick fuentes does and go this long without being banned on twitter which uh, i consider personally a moral good for our continued uh, promotion of mental health, uh, better education, right and now social is, development. Yes. Personally, I want to see Twitter's TOS Topics open up such that everybody's banned. I think the more people that Twitter bans, the better. I wouldn't consider this censorship. I would just consider this a promotion of mental health and our general well-being. Um, aside from that, mm. I just want to say it doesn't really matter what we, I don't know, what we think Twitter should be. At the end of the day, Twitter is a publicly traded company. At the end of the day, um, Twitter having a TOS and uh, how they tailor their TOS and how they enforce their TOS uh, is done for the benefit of their shareholders uh, because at the end of the day, it's a business that has to be profitable. And, uh, you know, if their advertisers are weary to advertise on a site that, you know, houses Nick Fuentes or, or posts certain types of content then or, or, or the types of content that Nick Fuentes is going to engage in, then if that scares away, you know, like advertisers, then it it impacts negatively the uh, the profitability of the company. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that's the only thing they ought to be concerned about. It's a publicly traded company. Okay, and we're going to throw it over to Hans. Uh, uh, best for last, obviously. I'm not going to try and reach out anything that anyone else has already said. Uh, Supreme is right. Twitter is a cesspool, even though I get to uh, post amazing thirst traps on it. Uh, Connor is right in terms of uh, free speech. Like, if we try and take away from the TOS system, things would probably fall apart. American Not Just correct in that most uh, public traded businesses need to look after the bottom line, and TOS, like, helps protect that. But I want to make a specific argument about the concept. Uh, this is for, largely for Spartacus, but everyone can uh, feel free to take into this. Is the concept of how uh, a free market of ideas can exist. And right now on this panel, uh, no one I believe here is banned. And we have a massive swap. We have anarchists, we have market socialists, we have conservatives. Uh, I don't know how far right uh, Spartacus and Turk are, but like I assume they're right wing. So that means we have an excellent uh, like spattering of people. And there are people I would say on the right and the left that I would be very comfortable getting off platform for the sake of like having decent discourse. Because if you want to be able to have an actual dialogue, some people are not like should not be allowed to be at the table. I would put Nazis in that. Uh, I would put like certain uh, flavors of aggressive tankies in that and other like flavors of genocide denial that I find extremely uh, dis, uh, discomforting and disgusting. So, yeah, uh, I would hope that uh, as we cultivate spaces for us to have these conversations, that we try and look for, uh, we would put limits on the edges. And I think most of us agree on the limits. It just would be a disagreement on where those limits are in particular. So, thank you. Wonderful. So, before we start, this is going to be edited out so the editor can put this at the beginning of the segment, and it is to address the Vosh thing, because I keep getting comments and messages about Vosh losing the Hippie Tippy Championship and the idea that I, I screwed Vosh. And I just wanted to quickly say that some would say that I screwed Vosh. Vosh would definitely tell you that I screwed him, but I look at that from a different standpoint. I look at it from the standpoint of not Danabo screwed Vosh or or Geek definitely did not screw Vosh, or, or any other uh, superstar in this business screwed uh, him. He would, it certainly isn't Dylan Burns that screwed Vosh. I truly believe that Vosh screwed Vosh, and he can look in the mirror and know that. I will certainly take responsibility for any decision I've ever made, and I've never had a problem doing that. Not all my decisions are accurate, they're not. But when I make a bad decision, I'm not above saying that I'm sorry and trying to do the best about it that I can. Hopefully the batting average is pretty good. I make the time, uh, I make good, more good decisions than probably bad decisions. And as far as screwing Vosh is concerned, there's a time-honored tradition in this uh, streaming panel business. And that is when somebody leaves, they, uh, they show the right amount of respect to the superstars in this case. Uh, that The people that helped make you a superstar. And I mean, you show the proper amount of respect to the organization that helped create the superstar that he was when it came to the panel business and the championship business. That's something I would have never expected from Vosh because he knows someone, he's known as somewhat of a traditionalist in this business. 
it would never have crossed my mind that he wouldn't want to show the right amount of respect to the organization that helped make him the superstar that he is now post hippy dippy i don't know why he made that bad decision bosch's decision but at the end of the day bosch screwed bosch anyway uh we're gonna go now start the topic uh any of you can pick it off yeah so hans quick this question you you mentioned a string of people that should be banned from twitter it are members of Antifa who organize riots and uh, promote for violence towards others, should they be banned as well? Uh, like, and specifically, like, the people who are, like, tr like organizing to hurt other people, like, just other random people on the street? Yeah, I'd be totally fine with taking those people down. And then also members of foreign governments that promote uh, their own uh, national propaganda and stuff, they should be banned from Twitter as well? Uh, in terms of national governments, I would take that a little less... Uh... Uh, I would probably say no for that, mostly because governments need to like be able to like put out their own statements and like obviously like if they're putting out propaganda, we know it's propaganda. I've seen propaganda from the Chinese government, I've seen propaganda from the Russian government, I've seen propaganda from like the United States government. Like every like nation probably has to have some capacity to like put out its stuff out into the world, and everyone is allowed to criticize it. But in the case of like uh, private figures, smaller entities, I give them a lot less credence than nation states. So the president of the United States should be banned. If the utility, uh, because there already is a White House uh, or a presidential uh, Twitter that he can use to like it, like put his messages out through, but if his specific uh, conduct is so potentially disastrous for the stability of a country, uh, I would potentially say that yeah, that's entirely possible because there are dozens of legal channels that he is allowed to go out through, right? Like no one's censoring Trump when he was president in the sense that oh, if he wants to be heard, he can stage a press briefing and everyone will go watch him at any time of his choosing, day or night, because he's the motherfucking president. So I don't have a huge issue with that. But if he like on his personal Twitter is saying a bunch of really crazy shit that like could be like incentivizing like violence and stuff, I'd probably say probably not. And I, I don't think that's inconsistent because it doesn't like remove his official capacity because he are, still has official channels with which to like do his like media stuff. But he should still be banned because the things he says and the ideas he's wanting to promote with others go counter to what you just exactly said a moment ago that people should be able to uh, say whatever they want. Um, I, I didn't say people should be able to say whatever. I already, I literally st started this panel by saying that there are thing, there are like certain positions that I think are ban worthy, and I don't think this is a, any flavor of a gotcha. To, like to say that to me, I yeah. Think I've been also, extremely clear. You know, we're kind of missing. We're kind of like uh, dancing around the reality, which is that uh, that Donald Trump was was like warned by this platform a number of times for violating the TOS repeatedly. He didn't just violate the TOS in one way, he violated it in, in numerous ways. Donald Trump was super irresponsible. Yeah. As well, right. They're not being banned and they're not being warned. I'm sorry, that what's that? Uh, you cut out for a second when you were trying to interrupt me. That's fine. I, I was gonna say that there are plenty of other accounts that are doing similar things <sighs> where they're not getting warned that we know of and they're not being actively banned from the platform. Oh, oh You're yeah. Absolutely um, have you right. have you have you reported those? Absolutely like you should probably true. go report those. There, is what I would say. If you know, uh, if you like, like so know that if you know that somebody is like planning terrorism and you're not doing anything about it, like what what are you doing? Uh, also, the uh, Turk. Uh, there's been a lot of really interesting things that have happened with this with Republicans on Twitter because so, like certain Republicans have been banned, and other people have asked and said, "Oh, well, uh, other Republican officials are saying similar things to potential like figures like Fuentes or like uh, what Trump has done, but they haven't been banned yet." And I believe Twitter's response was, "If we adequately enforce the TOS as written, virtually every Republican official with a Twitter account would be banned." And they're it like, like, "This is like, true, yeah." If you want to enforce it like fully, we can take the Republican Party entirely off Twitter. Like, like sure. If we want to be, if we want to be more consistent, like I'd be down with that. Like, at least four people on the panel at least mentioned that the TOS Wait, should. One, one moment. Can I just? Can access. Can I? Ask, who just? Uh, uh, Hans, did you just say you would ban the? You would be fine with the Republican Party completely being banned off Twitter? Um, I'm saying if their current, if the issue uh, that the Turk raised was about inconsistency, and that we ban certain officials and not other officials. I would say that yes, if two officials are making the exact same statement, and both of them are public figures, and it, and they have like say uh, like official accounts that they can use, then I would say yeah, you can ban their private account for like putting out like uh, potentially damaging or dangerous information, and for the sake of consistency that the Turk is like desperately like wanting again like, and I can totally understand that, and I can vibe with that for like from a TOS perspective, you want to be able to enforce things like across the board, and if that means banning 99% of the Republican Party off of Twitter because they're saying like insane shit. 
I'm, not, I'm saying election officials, not saying like like bog standard like Republican regular people. Then yeah, that's totally fine. And like consistency's happy, everyone's happy. TOS has uh, been like punished for violations, and uh, we're all happy. So, yeah, yeah. Why why so, should the Republican Party get special treatment if a bunch of their members are making death threats or if I mean let's even just go into a hypothetical here. Let's just pretend that the that it's not the Republican Party we're talking about. Let's say a new party forms up. We'll call it the Trumplican Party, and this party is just their members are just constantly engaging in hate speech or constantly engaging in violent threats or constantly um like saying things like oh i think twitter should be destroyed or all kinds of things why would we give them spe why would you give them special treatment there's another problem that's going on here that again it's just like there's this there's almost like this uh willingness to exist in like a, a hypothetical world instead of the actual world which is that when Trump was banned, every single action that was taken against Trump was like heavily, heavily documented by Twitter publicly. Twitter even released a massive blog explaining the reasoning for why they decided to, to remove uh, Trump from Twitter. They don't do that for almost anybody else. Most people just get banned and you might get an email that says, hey, this was the tweet that did it and that's about it. So Twitter went above and beyond to try and facilitate Trump's presence on their platform, even though he was actively engaging in things that violated the TOS. I think that it's absurd to claim that like this was some sort of like frivolous action or punitive action that was taken by Twitter or some sort of conspiracy. It's simply not true. They documented every single step that they take. They even invented new features that didn't previously exist on the platform to facilitate Donald Trump still being on the platform without putting them um, in a position where they couldn't run their own platform. I'm not a big fan of Twitter. Like, I have a lot of problems with the way that Twitter runs things. I have a lot of problems with the way that they enforce their TOS. A lot of it is done automated. Um, there are people who get banned all the time for, um, like, disagreeing or using certain terms. For example, like, uh, one thing that gets brought up quite frequently is that the term um, TERF, uh, you know, trans exclusionary radical feminist is a term that often gets mass reported and mass flagged. This is an exploit. It's not anything. There's nothing wrong with saying something like that. There's nothing at all wrong with saying like that. It's not even classifiable as hate speech. Um, however, uh, because of the way that the bots work, people are able to use that to get people thrown off the system. But that's a problem with how the TOS is enforced and not a problem with the TOS itself. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't even really matter because they're, like I said earlier, they're a private business and they can, I mean, they can throw out whoever they want. And, but but are should we... they be? But should they be? The question is should, right? So the question is, is under underneath current law, the, the question isn't like, oh, underneath current law, can Twitter do this? The question did not yeah. include the word can. The question yeah, was legally should. legally they can. And I would, no, the question, that's why the question didn't include can, Nacho, because it, it the question was should. And so we're, we're arguing, right now, what's being argued about is can, can, can. Um, and I, I want to bring up something that Dima Mamo was talking about. The idea that violence only comes from the right is absolutely pathetic, and it's fear mongering. Wait, whoever? Okay? I never, Anybody I literally never that. said I, that. I, I, I don't literally never said, said that. that. I just said that. I just said that more Republicans like were banned from Twitter. But Spratica, when she you say was, like Twitter, she, she, like she Twitter should be pumped. To... But wait, like when you said like Twitter wait, should be publicly time. owned, right? Like wait, wait, no, no, I said Twitter should wait. be I said Twitter should be considered the new public square, as the CEO put it in front of Congress. The CEO compared himself to the compared his his platform to the new public square. So if he's gonna compare it to the new public square, then it should be treated as the new public square. Not only that, but you're also a platform. So you don't wait, you don't, are you take, like you are you right lawsuits. now like so trying you, to legislate? I'm still talking, wait, wait. Please, I'm, uh, you don't get lawsuits for things that are put on your platform by other people. You don't get lawsuits because of that and you're protected by it. But if you decide to start picking off people you don't like and you start choosing which narrative you want put on your platform, you are then becoming a publisher, which means what? you can be sued. And there's different and there's different tax laws um, for a publisher than there is a platform. These two things are completely and wholly different. And what everyone is wanting, what everyone's wanting to be, is they're wanting Twitter to be a publisher, while at the no. same time um, getting the benefits of being a platform. And no. that's just asinine. That's that's, that's not true. Okay. Um, and also the the idea that like I, I don't know, I don't know where like where we got into the conversation where we're taking like the the CEO of Twitter's sales pitches at face value just because the Twitter CEO says our our website is so awesome it's the new public square like that's ridiculous like you can't you can't litigate based on like some random claim from like a sales pitch that's very very silly it's, 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 that was not a sales pitch um hold on it, it, it wasn't a sales pitch it was a Wait. Uh, okay thing so 
What? I'm gonna refer to rule one. When I'm talking, nobody else is talking. So we're gonna go down the list of people who've raised their hands. Uh, again, I think it's it's a little, it's not too sporadic right now, so I don't think we need too much hand raising, but I'm gonna throw it first over to Connor. Yeah, so um, I just want to take this opportunity to respond to your screen Vosh statement. I hope he's allowed in the future to come back and defend his belt. I mean, like, he, he needs to come back and fight for it, right? If he wants it, he's got to fight for it. No? I think he's going to be muted for a little bit, and we're going to go back down the list. We're going to go next to Xander Hall. Censorship. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to touch on some things that Spraticus said. Um, so you mentioned that Twitter is now the public square, and free speech protections ought to apply there as such. Um, and I wanted to ask you uh, a couple of questions following that to see what your responses would be. Um, are you allowed to call for violence in the public square? No. Okay, so if someone is calling for violence or engaging in rhetoric that naturally leads to violent action, would you agree that that's bannable on Twitter or should be? Okay, so that was a very vague part of the last question, is saying saying things that may that will inevitably lead. Wait, you um, should just answer so, the question first. No, right? I can no, clarify. So I'll clarify if you want. I, I won't put I, you I'm into asking for question. clarification. I'm asking for clarification, right? So I, I don't think I should be pushed. I don't think I should be pushed by Supreme. Well, he asked asking you a direct question. So no, I mean, no, no, I'm, I'm asking for clarification of the question. Am I not allowed to do that? I mean, no, okay, please I'm go ahead. I'm allowed to ask for clarification. Can I get some clarification on that? Because it was a very vague last part. Sure, we'll use Nick Fuentes as an example. Nick Fuentes uh, very often talks about how the Holocaust isn't real and how Jewish people run the world and how they're a danger to your way of life and you need to protect yourself. Would you consider that rhetoric that naturally leads to violence, especially considering he helped organize the uh, the um, insurrection? Insurrection, yeah. No. Nope. Then it sounds like your um, your bar speech. is pretty it's, high. It's vile, it's, uh, it's vile speech, but it, it's it's not it's not a call to violence. So no, mm. it's vile speech. Okay, I, so do you think do you think that like Jewish wait, people wait, are wait, horrible wait, with wait, monsters? Wait, wait, and like we wait, have to stop wait, them. Wait, One at a time. There were three people talking at the same time. Uh, I'm gonna let Xander Hall finish his line of questioning. Uh, then I'm gonna go to Hans because they're next on the list. And okay. I wrote your name down, Demon. Mama. So Spraticus, how do you feel about uh, members of terror groups like ISIS recruiting and spreading propaganda on social media networks like Twitter? Well, active terrorist group, uh, uh, an active terrorist group, yes, something that's, something that's legalized as a terrorist group obviously uh -oh. doesn't, have, um, it doesn't have the protections under, under the public square. Unless I'm confused, is ISIS allowed to go in the public square and uh, recruit, uh, recruit for terror? I mean, is that allowed in the public square? They were allowed on Twitter. Not from what I'm aware, but there have been members of ISIS and a lot of uh, radicalization towards these terror groups happens online. And the reason why I bring this up is that Nicholas Fuentes is literally on an FBI no-fly list. He's being investigated for his involvement, along with many other people that were there. Would that not qualify as an, an engaged in an attack on our capital? Would that not qualify as more or less up there with uh, a terror group? Or terrorism? Sorry, does, he, does, does, does he even have charges against him? Has he been convicted of something? Because I'm pretty sure as I'm pretty sure as far as uh, as far as the United States goes, you're innocent until proven guilty. Why are guilty. you taking a bullet for Nick Fuentes, dude? Like why? Why no, I'm not taking fucking... a bullet. I'm, take, I'm not taking a bullet for Nick Fuentes. I can you care are. less about that. No, no. Listen, I can care less about Nick Fuentes. I'm taking a bullet for free speech because what happens? Because what happens is what happens is is they say, okay, we're gonna go after the far right. Okay, so I. I the th theoretically, oh, yeah. I shouldn't care because I'm not far right. Because I don't espouse those ideas that I shouldn't care because it's not going to affect me. Until it moves to the right. Then the center right's not going to care because it doesn't affect them. Then the center right gets hit. Then the oh, center gets hit. So and it, by the time the left is there, I'm loving no so one's going to be there to speak up for you when your protections of speech are taken away. Spartacus, Did you just you wait? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have, I'm a, sorry. Stri I have I... a false strike on my YouTube channel right now. And like... My channel's being suppressed because of that. And and YouTube responded and doubled down. They tried to claim that I was scamming my videos. There's not an agenda against the right. The problem is these platforms put out a strict TOS against hate you speech. Can't, you and can't unfortunately, that, Republicans have a tendency to break those rules a lot. Uh, can, can I just pop that, in though, for one quick the reason, note? The reason you can't say that is because Google, Facebook, Twitter, they have all refused to release information on who they banned and why they banned them. Um, I they, agree with you there. I agree. So they, they've all refused to release information. So you can't say that this doesn't, it isn't affecting the right on a far majority um, than it's affecting the left. But what okay, I okay, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. wait. This, is, this has gone so out of control. Wait, 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 wait. Can I finish? Okay, we're going to let Sprouticus finish. Then we're going to return to the list. 
uh, to, to get some order. But if, of course, if anybody wants to immediately respond, they can. Is it alright if I respond to what he said after so he finishes? I, uh, yes, of course. Right. But what I do see is I see the right talking about being banned. I see the right being banned. I don't see I don't I don't see the same phenomenon on the left. Um, I, I see the right uh, trying arguing against Facebook, arguing against Twitter, trying to get their platforms back. You don't see this on the left. You see this on the right. You don't see it on the left. So that is why I say this is a this is aimed towards the right, and that that's the reason I say that. I mean, which, which right figures have been banned? Which right? Uh, banned uh, mm -hmm. Donald J. Trump. Um, okay. I, I who's a, I who's really a guy like that certain... Twitter affirmed for a long time, kept breaking really TOS, care. and they kept creating really exceptions care. for I him really to don't stay care. on the platform Supreme, in I was, spite I was... of him. Supreme, listen, I really don't care what you well, think of Donald J. Trump. There we you go. Can orange, well, no, wait, you, wait, wait, you can wait, make wait, Orange Man all wait, you want. Wait, wait, I, I want to make sure Supreme got to finish this statement. Then Xander Hall was going to respond. Then we're going to keep if, going. If you're really confident in your positions, you won't be afraid to contend with my contention, okay? Go ahead. Give me your contention. Listen, we, we, we talked about this earlier, right? Like, Donald Trump, Twitter affirmed for a long time that Donald Trump kept breaking TOS, and Twitter kept telling everyone, we want to ban him, but we this would set a, a precedent of, like, banning world leaders, and we don't want to do that yet. They kept making exceptions to keep him on the platform when they had already affirmed that he was breaking TOS, and were he not the president of the United States, they would have banned him. The only, the only reason... The only... <laughs> The only reason they didn't ban Donald Trump is because he was the president of the United States. That's the, it's the only reason they gave him all these um, exceptions to the rules. Um, you don't see this with Steven Crowder. Um, you don't see this with John Burke. Uh, you don't see this with uh, big political uh, right uh, people on, on social media. Um, that Those are the people you don't see it with because wow. they don't hold a public office okay. in which it would be very, very much um, the decision would be very much debated uh, whether or not you made a good decision or not. All right, okay, I, so what I asked can, you was, wait. which figures on the right have been banned? To make this, to make this argument that Twitter keeps banning uh, conservatives or whatever. What other conservative figures have been banned on Twitter? I'm curious. I mean, it's more than just banning, right? So you can understand that censoring is more than just banning. Uh -oh. It's suspending. It's shadow banning. No, we don't. We, you don't have an answer to that, to be clear. I mean, I, 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 can, I, can, I, can, can I finish? I mean, can I finish? Okay. I mean, am I allowed to give you a fucking answer, Supreme? Because you just want to keep interrupting me I, and not let me give it. you an answer. You've been talking <laughs> a lot. Like... I know, but everyone's asking me questions. I mean, if you oh, yeah. want, if everyone wants to ask me questions, then I'm I'm gonna talk a lot because I'm responding to everybody. That's okay. So, um, with that being with that being said, um, censorship is more than just banning. There's shadow banning. Um, there's suppressing. There's uh, demonetization. These and there's uh, uh, I probably banning as well. But th these are all I'll accept, an attempt I'll accept all for of those. censorship. Can you name okay. some figures. Yeah, Stephen Crowder, John Burke. Um, mm -hmm. Ben Shapiro, um, Donald J. Trump. Um, Crowder still keep has moving Twitter. On. Huh? Like, Crowder still has Twitter. I, no, he, he, accept, he, 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 he accepted Shapiro. all. He accepted all of what I said. Shadow Was banning, Shapiro? demonetization. Was Shapiro banned? Suspended. Suspended, yeah. But Crowder was suspended for giving uh, fake COVID-19 claims. Which he does all the time. And like yeah, as a public health hazard because the claims change and he was citing a reputable source but that was still enough to get him banned i mean i even don't think the, that's even true the if post, i remember the new york post was censored okay so so xander hall you wanted to respond to something and then we're going to go down the list from connor demon and uh, turk all right, so you mentioned before that there's an agenda or a disproportionate uh, enforcement of the TOS on conservatives, and you don't see it as much with people on the left. And the reason why I bring that up is if you read TOS, for the most part, a lot of the rules you'll find are don't discriminate against people based on their uh, gender identity, sexuality, race, etc. Don't engage in hate speech towards these groups. And unfortunately, if you go to any conservative media outlet or any conservative YouTube channel, you'll find the vast majority of their content is talking about how the trans ideology is turning or are trying to make it so that kids are cutting their dicks off or how uh, BLM is a terrorist organization and there's no problem and, and black people are just thugs or whatever. Unfortunately, when a lot of the rhetoric of conservative conservatives right now is racist, transphobic, sexist, or homophobic, you're going to find the TOS is going to, they're going to get caught in it more. But I do agree 
there needs okay. to be changes made since YouTube, for example, is a lot of people's jobs. If YouTube is your job, then you should at the very least be notified as to why you are being punished when that happens. I think that's a huge problem. Lots of people have been just banned for no reason um, by YouTube because it's all bots and automated, and these are their jobs. And I completely agree there needs to be more uh, communication with the platforms and those that are employed on those platforms. I completely agree on that. On that, I'm, part. Glad, I'm glad we can agree, but that was a wild mischaracterization of the right um, to say that the the overall majority of the rights videos or the rights content on social media is suggesting that black people are thugs. Um, I, I disagree, and I can contest this. I can contest this. The right. I can contest this. Okay. Um, but I, I can either wait till my okay, turn. Okay, then we got to return to the list after. Uh, just go to the list, and I'll put it on my list of things. Okay, you are right after Connor, so Connor. <clears throat> Ah, oh, thank you, Demon Mama. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Um, appreciate so, you, too. Also, so, I was instrumental in the freeing of Connor. Let it be known. Uh, after I held up my sign, Connor was freed. I have <laughs> democratic power. I am the voice of the people. Uh, th th thank you. Democracy wait, proves it. Let me, let me do this as well. In the next year, it's going to rain. That was me. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, so I just I just want everybody to put on their thinking caps and invert some of the logic that we're using here. Um, oftentimes, uh, lefties, liberals, progressives are using the uh, free market rhetoric, which is why it's so effective, by the way, um, uh, for right wingers. But I'm wondering if this logic is going to hold when it comes to platforms like Getter, the Twitter clone that is conservative, that is going to have its own TOS, that is probably going to allow a whole bunch of nefarious shit that you don't want um, and is probably going to be a lot more lax. Are we going to be saying that they are a private corporation who is allowed to control their speech and as long as it doesn't get within um the realm of directly calling for violence and getter goes ahead and accepts um a certain amount of uh you know not liability but they, they're 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 barred from liability so even if something nefarious is planned on their platform um then are we going to be giving them a pass and just saying that this is their tos so yeah sure free market wins again and then what i, I have two more points before we go off um so uh, I am never going to defend Nick Fuentes, but what I would say is real in this country is uh, Christian nationalism, uh, basically a, a combination of like a kind of like Christian theocracy. I think that's very real. Uh, people who don't necessarily care about the Constitution, they care about implementing their uh, worldview that's rooted in religion on everybody else. Um, and then I think that there is something that is hypocritical about the left versus right. Supreme was asking for specific examples. Um, I'll give you specific examples. Um, so as um, Xander Hall brought up, the, t the Twitter terms of service are often along uh, hate crime demographics. That's what it is. That's what it is. Race, gender, color, creed, all that kind of stuff. Um, what's not necessarily punished, which I find abhorrent, um, is like mass slaughter, denial, and promotion. Um, and this is something that's really frustrating for me dealing with uh, tankies in particular because they're uh, basically talking about like, oh, hey, the Kulaks deserved it. Well, the Kulaks were a class of Ukrainians, you know, 70 years ago, so they deserved it. Um, Stalin deserved or should have purged more people. A tweet that I reported um, that is still standing and the content um, that is the, the, the profile is still standing, by the way. Um, and basically, so people who are advocating for mass slaughter and authoritarian uh, politics, but receive no punishment because despite Despite excusing the mass execution of human beings, it's not along racial or religious lines. Um, so I find that disgusting. I think that's a loophole that should be closed. Um, and if we were looking for terms of service equal application, I would be a whole lot less butthurt if Nick Fuentes was being banned for talking, you know, making uh, cookie memes and all that kind of shit, if that person who was apologizing for mass slaughter was also banned. Um, so I'll leave it there for now. I agree with Connor. All right, Next I have a bit of DMO. stuff that I, I've been waiting a long time, so I have a couple of things I want to address. First of all, uh, Sprouticus, I find it, like, almost hilariously silly that you would you would reference the words of Martin Niemöller or first they came for the uh, the socialists, et cetera, et cetera, in, in talking about, in, in defense of a Holocaust denier. I mean, I, I find that just very ironic. Um, but... That's a rather small note. So the couple of issues here. First of all, to respond immediately to or to build off of something that Connor uh, says, I actually think that there's a very good chance that that account will be removed. But keep in mind um, that 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 account not being removed right now is not a good is not like a good argument or indication of any bias. Remember, how long has Nick Fuentes been on the platform? Unfortunately, we know that 
we know that that Twitter is is very very slow with this sort of stuff. So I don't think that's a good. I don't think that should be used as evidence of any sort of bias. It's just that they're slow to any of this stuff. As we know, Nick Fuentes is not exactly the most subtle individual with some of the things that he says. So there's a couple of other things I wanted to touch on. First of all, this is from a bit ago. This was talking about the difference between a publisher versus a platform. This is not a binary. Um, it, it's not. It's not just your you. You know, you switch over into the publisher category or you fall into the um into the uh you know um platform category uh, a publisher is 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 very very specific when we're talking about a publisher we're talking about an organization that specifically curates what's on its web page so for example and in fact some organizations are both publishers and platforms an example of this is the new york times is a publisher but their comment section is a platform and that's because the structure is different they are legally distinct um they can uh the the new york times can be uh, held liable for publishing an article for, for choosing to put out an article and grant and put their stamp on it and say this is official this is media this is journalism but they can't be done for that for some asshole in their comments because these are different these are just different internet structures that people are refusing to acknowledge the difference between. Secondly, with regard to the ISIS issue, um, I think that's an interesting one because I think some free speech, um, like hardcore free speech people, would be able to successfully argue that ISIS does have a right to recruit in public as long as they're not explicitly encouraging violence. I don't think that's the case. I think that's fucked up. But uh, the fact of the matter is that that's a big issue. If you have people who are recruiting in public, uh, clamping down on their on their freedom of speech can actually become a legitimate freedom of speech issue. But we don't want that happening on every website. Can you imagine if NickJr.com had ISIS people um, like like recruiting children? Come on, that's ridiculous. That, that wouldn't even function as a, as, a, as a website. You wouldn't be able to have any website. No website would work. Um, in addition, a lot of what I've been hearing here is a, a lot of um, allegations of a conspiracy, um, allusions to a conspiracy for which there is no actual evidence. I've not seen actual evidence that there is any bias. I've just heard an assertion that there is a bias towards right wingers. And also to build off of that with what with what Xander Hall said, um, I can give you an example of someone right now who is not banned, not been hindered by YouTube whatsoever, who legitimately puts out what I consider to be explicit hate speech. And that's Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh has a massive t YouTube account. Matt Walsh literally makes videos, and I've watched these on my stream and reviewed them on stream, where he accuses authors of promoting pedophilia for having a book that ha that explains LGBT terms for kids. That is absolutely hateful rhetoric. We know that acute that it's arguably slander or libel. I can't remember which one is which at the moment. But um, but th these plat these right wingers get away with this stuff this stuff all the time and that and i think that is in violation of the tos but you don't see it enforced if you're going to allege that there's some sort of mass conspiracy to uh control uh to control the narrative you have to actually prove evidence of that otherwise you may as well be talking about ufos can i have a brief interjection oh I, I, um, there was there was a mischaracterization of me that i'd like to okay. address during that okay so first we're gonna go sprout and thank you brawlerella thank you and back and forth but Turk has been waiting very patiently. He even put his baseball cap on backwards. So I'm going to make sure that we get over to him. Then Connor, of course, eventually you. But Sprout, you can respond. Okay. So the mischaracterization of me, of course, was saying that I was defending Nick Fuentes. I've said, I've said it again and again and again that I'm not defending Nick Fuentes. People ask me why I was taking a bullet for Nick Fuentes. I'm not taking a bullet for Nick Fuentes. I'm taking a bullet for free speech. And I've said that before, and I'll say it again. I really don't care what happens to Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes is none of my concern. What is my concern is the freedom of speech, considering I started this panel off saying I'm a constitutionalist conservative. So, I mean, to argue that I'm defending Nick Fuentes is quite disgusting to argue that I'm defending what he's saying and saying that I think that the freedom of speech should prevail. Uh, um, that, that is a quite disgusting uh, mischaracterization. Can I, can I, can I just clarify? Do you clarify? realize that like, defending the right to, like, say those things? Like, tacitly means you're okay with him, like, being around and spewing his vile shit. Like, you're okay with that. Like, that's the position you're supporting, is you're letting Nick Fuentes continue to be around and say those things and say horrible things and deny, and not, and, like, deny the Holocaust and all sorts of insane shit like that. And, then, yeah, like, you want to, like, hide behind, like, oh, yeah, I'm just, like, a constitutional conservative. And that's totally fine, dude. But, like, realize the people that you're enabling. Because, like, those TSs are pretty fucking broad. You have to do some pretty insane shit to get banned or, like, there has to be some really shady shit, which, again, we all want more transparency. But the people on the fringes that would use this the most are either genocide deniers or Nazis or some flavor of, like, one or one or the other, right? 
So I just want to know, like, if you're okay with that. Uh, also, if also, it's just, if it's such, okay, I, I wanted to clarify I because you were responding. Okay, so he, I want to let Sproticus respond one at a time. I don't want to oh, be okay, like okay, one okay. to the next to the next. So he just made a thing against me. So yeah. Okay, so what? Your your basic statement is saying that it's enabling these people the freedom of speech. Like I said before, like I said in my opening statement, it needs to be for the most offensive of speech. Because when you're not saying something that's not offensive, when you're not saying something that doesn't go against other people, when you're not saying something against power, you're not saying something that no one else would disagree with. Then you don't need the protections of the First Amendment. It's only when you offend someone. It's only when you disagree with somebody. It's only when you don't have a popular opinion that you need the uh, you need the protections of the First Amendment because you are the weak man on the totem pole. So yes, I would say that the First Amendment needs to be applied to even the most vile of speech. There's already been Supreme Court cases limiting the First Amendment, such as you can't say fire in a movie theater, which I have no problems with. Um, but if you want if you want that done, then that needs to be done through a uh, convention of the states, and we can, maybe you can change the First Amendment to say that um, you can't misgender somebody, if, if, that's, if that's really how you feel. Um, but no, I'm defending the First Amendment as it stands right now, that it needs to stand for the most vile of speech, because if it doesn't stand for the most vile of speech, then it doesn't stand at all. Yes, it does. Do you think no, organizing Do you think organizing an insurrection on the capital of the United States is just vile offensive speech? Or who organized it? It was organized in part by Nicholas Fuentes, along with, I think his name was Ali Has Alexander. Charged? Has he been charged? He's currently on an FBI fl no fly list. I'm pretty charged? sure he's in the process. Has he been charged? I believe he has been charged. He's 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 Yes or He's no? Admit, he admitted to being part of it. Why? Why does this matter? Whether or not he's he been part charged of it. yet less convicted. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, but He's we're running into the problem again. But wait, wait, wait. This is neither here. Hold on. Can I say something? He admitted to it. Okay. And it's until proven guilty, right? Okay. OJ was never found guilty. We know he did. Listen, neither of us. Nobody here. What's up? Okay. Okay. You little adorable rapscallions. Okay, we're gonna now go back to the list. We're gonna go Turk, then Connor, do, then Demon. Sorry, do, uh, can I get my one little thing in? There was a small, a small contention to uh, what Sprouticus it, said. It's six seconds. Six okay. Seconds. Uh, six seconds. Okay. Listen, all well, I was saying small, is that. Small contention. Okay, I, I didn't I didn't I, I don't believe I used the word defend uh, Nick Fuentes directly. However, uh, I do think it's odd that you would that you would trot out an explicitly anti-Nazi statement that. in defense of a Nazi that you are doing. You are ultimately defending Nick Fuentes, even if you're not defending him d immediately, you're defending his actions. Okay, I'm gonna go over to Turk. Yeah, so a few things. So to Demon Mama, uh, you mentioned there's a difference between a uh, publisher and uh, a platform. platform. Yeah. So when Twitter starts to insert comments into tweets such as this hasn't been verified by somebody or whatever or whatever, mm -hmm. or they decide to hide someone's comment in a thread saying this is something that you've selected to not look at, mm -hmm. even though you haven't selected to not look at, is that not considered uh, editorial uh, direction? Because you're you're no, that's that's absurd. Notifying them that they are going into something they might not want to see. Wait, but that's absurd. The idea that 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 um, them putting a warning about uh, a, on certain tweets that they think are, are uh, like dangerous to their platform or dangerous beyond that, that that's editorial. That's that's ridiculous. It, 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 do you know, like, have you ever I don't know if you've ever like worked with writing or at all, but an editor literally reads over your entire piece will make massive changes to it, usually retitles it, usually actually changes the structure of a piece and edit like editorial oversight is a huge process it's not just it's not just putting a random like a putting a warning out there and um and and as far as i know once again if you think that they're editorializing with a specific bias you have to prove that you can't just motion at a at like some sort of um you know uh, conspiracy that you you have in your head you have to actually prove that they're doing that uh, to my knowledge most of what they've put out there has been very specifically tied to current ongoing events such as uh i don't know the insurrection things that are very that could literally put people's lives on the line which i think is well within their rights to say hey be careful we don't know what's going on with this don't hurt yourself the same way as um for example 
uh, Discord will um, often uh, put warnings on like, hey, this person has sent you a message and they're not on your friends list and they're sending you a link. It might be spam. It's your, are you saying that your email is doing editorial, is like using editorial privilege for filtering your spam folder? That's absurd. This is just, it's, it's, it's almost childish in the way that it's formulated. Like, come on, like an editor is somebody who literally rewrites and puts a final stamp on a piece of, of, of media that's then published. They're not the same thing at all, not even close. I do think so that there's that a conver- Hold on, hold on. I do think that there's a conversation to be had about how these companies determine what sort of like auto-modding decisions or what sort of um, like warnings they, they put out there. Um, but they're not like they're not even in the same galaxy. They're, they're they're it's so different from that. And if you want to say that like oh there's um the the, the you know Jack Dorsey is secretly uh, implementing a mind control propaganda campaign by controlling the narrative via uh, warnings about scams and misinformation, then you have to provide evidence for that because until then you you just sound like David Icke. You just I'm glad you educated me on what an editor does. I'm glad you think you're welcome. So you're very welcome. My stuff no because that was really condescending oh, you're welcome you like i know but but listen sometimes people does. say something really silly and i just got to correct it you know no the question was do you think if that is editorial editorialization you could have said no i don't and then i could have gone to my next point but you took five minutes to explain some stupid uh, you're response welcome to i know i'm very kind I mean, and patient I mean, with people i, know, I, mean, really I mean i mean turk this wait, is coming from wait. this is this is coming from somebody there we go we got it drives me twice wait so. wait okay wait Okay, let's let Turk finish. I just want to make sure Turk I mean, has time I've, to finish. I've been published on the internet. If you can go to my page, you can find my links to that stuff. I'm completely aware of what editorialization is. I want to clarify. Okay, well, that's very good for you. I'm glad you're very smart. And then, did you have so anything? Did you wait? Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you have anything of substance, or were you just going to okay, complain about okay, a woman so talking too much? Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I asked for us all to give Turk some time to finish his point. I would like us to do that, please. Did she get okay. muted like Connor did? Sprout, you know by you doing that, it's just get, taking more time away from Turk. Turk, and, please. And I, I'll, I'll shorten my next one. It's like, so Demon and Xander, y'all both got strikes on your YouTube channel, right? Yep. So yep. Uh, what I've learned from the lefty sphere on Twitter is that you're not getting censored and you're not getting punished. You're getting what you deserve. So my advice would be to uh go through the process according to the platform and uh try and get their strike removed otherwise your content is what got the strike and you got to deal with it and that's just the nature of the platform so sorry I, well, I that's a, so that was you, a very nice non sequitur wait, are you claiming that i'm hypocritical because i think it's okay if like a conservative who engages in the rhetoric that they tend to engage in gets banned for hate speech but then well, i I'm, am upset that i get falsely striked for scamming I'm, in a I'm, political yeah. stream you're mis you mischaracterizing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, from my right-leaning perspective, that is what I've been told by people because mm -hmm. what we do mm -hmm. is uh, consequences for our actions. And if we say something stupid, we deserve to get um, punished or consequences. I'm, I'm so, sorry. Like, what is this a response? Can, like, can, can you wait, 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 real quick? Can you tell me what this is a response to? This literally just feels like like a More like interruption. A, a whiny by, uh, nonsense. The above me. Wait, excuse me. I didn't interrupt. He was done talking, and then I responded. He wasn't, he wasn't done talking. He literally had stopped talking. And listen, Sprouticus, I After understand. Talking, I understand yeah. that okay, you're really. I, I understand that you're okay. really desperate. <laughs> To, to, so can we can we not I, waste I time yeah, on the boorish okay. fucking like Don so, Quixote tilting so and windmills? About, and okay, so how about this? Let's replace the second topic with the who was Turk done or not done talking discussion. That's going to replace immigration now. Okay, so we're going to have that. That's going to be new. That's going to be thirty minutes of dialogue for that. Okay, so I, this feels like it's going a little nowhere now. So I'm going to move it over to Connor and Zan, and then we're going to wrap the topic up. So we're going to go over to Connor and then Zan. Yay! I have a direct response for Demon Mama. I'm super excited to do this. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, I, I feel like we need to pick a lane intellectually. Um, so you're saying that there's no bias against conservatives, but then when uh, kind of the other thing that we're saying here is that conservatives are more likely to uh, commit hate speech, whether that's uh, misgendering, talking about you know uh, black people being inferior, like all that kind of stuff. So what I would say is that if we're identifying this as a variable of conservative rhetoric, and as a result, they're being banned more often, then this would still show a bias. Now, maybe it's a positive bias because that's not the kind of speech that you want to permit, but I would still say that that's showing that there's a certain kind of rhetoric that's being preferred over a certain kind of rhetoric. I do have another point before I let anybody else talk. And then I also think that this is a, a really interesting point about 
um, free speech, uh, specifically to Sprouticus. Um, so, for instance, like, I'm very, I, I served in the global war on terror. I was a teenager when 9-11 happened. Uh, international jihadism is a personal problem of mine. Um, but I think the world is globalizing and we have to face that issue. Um, welcome, I am not just buddy. concerned You're with welcome, Christian buddy. nationalism. I am also uh, concerned with authoritarian Islamic theocracy. Um, while ISIS might not be able to recruit in the public square because we've deemed them a terrorist organization and they're not able to, there are other Islamist organizations like Hizbut Tahrir in uh, Australia that are basically Islamist organizations that advocate against democracy in the public forum. They literally say, this is bullshit. The Western way of the world is bullshit. Um, we Maybe. would prefer to have a theocracy and all that kind of stuff. And what I'm what I'm saying um, what I'm saying with that is universal liberalism has to have rules that apply to everybody. So if we're going to have free speech for Christian nationalists and anti Semites, and we're going to like force that down on platforms and publishers, then or platforms, then we have to have that when it comes to Islamists. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it there. So I, I gave you both two points. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you're recruiting, wait, wait, wait. So. I was I was asked first. I know that's hard to parse. Go ahead. But, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Me respond. Um, so first of all, I I I I understand where you're coming from, Connor. But I never asserted that there for sure was not a bias against right wing people, or um, nor did I nor did I assert that like right like I mean I do do tend to think that right wingers have a um, have a propensity towards doing like anti-social behaviors that ruin platforms, but that's a different discussion. I, I never made either of those claims that you claimed that I did. However, um, w with that in mind, I the only like hard piece of data that I've seen that shows a bias, um, I actually have a, a document here, which was a a, re a large report from yeah, New York. We lost. My, cut out. We lost. Oh. Uh, my apologies. Am I here? Fine. Yes. Sorry about that. My, my apologies. Um, so, uh, 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 what I was saying is I never made those two uh, those assertions that you claimed I did. Um, I do tend to think um, on a different discussion we could discuss like the propensity towards um, violence. And I will note that if it's true, if you're saying that 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 uh, Republicans using violent rhetoric um, like as a as a trend makes them discriminated against by these platforms, I would say that it would apply to ISIS as well because if you if you if you think that oh well you can't discriminate against republicans when they're being violent well then you can't explain you know discriminate against isis when they're being violent we have to recognize that even if your ideology um it like includes a, f a whole lot of violence that that could make you unfit for a space but secondly um the only hard data i've been able to find about online bias uh to this uh, to this point is a report that was done in february um, by NYU, which I can provide to the chat if you so desire. It was also written about in The Guardian. Um, it was uh, fact-checking um, and challenging claims made um, by Senator Ted Cruz. Um, and it actually showed that the algorithms tend to promote right-wing content more than left-wing content on, on a passive. Now, of course, with regard to bans, that was much harder because a lot of that, that is not like publicly available information. But with regard to public algorithms, right-wing content is actually quite favored on Facebook and Twitter specifically um, with regard uh, as far as the hard data goes. What my argument that I was making this entire time was that there have been numerous of the right-wingers on this panel. Um, or rather, I should say two of them because, uh, yeah, I should say two of the right wingers, not all of them. Um, but two of the right wingers on this panel have made claims that there is such an, an uh, a, a bias that exists. And in fact, they've made the claim that it's like it's like rampant and a huge societal issue. If that's the case, it should be no issue to actually prove that. But they don't. They just let it lie in the realm of uh, of speculation and conspiracy. Again, just like some sort of, uh, I don't know, UFO conspiracy theorist. So Another wild point mischaracterization point? of what I was saying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna respond to wait, what I'm gonna respond. Wait, Can I respond? I, oh. I, you gotta give me a moment here, okay? Because we're, we gotta wrap it up because we're running out of time. So what we're going to do Connor, is we're going. To, okay, I understand that. Give me okay. a fucking second, okay? Everybody has outros, okay? I know this is the magical card no one remembered. So we're going to go into outros. I did promise Zan he was gonna have some time to speak. Um, and then I saw Sprouticus was asked by like multiple people, pe multiple statements made towards him. So I'll give him like 20 to 30 more seconds to everybody else to like respond. To yeah, this has been a good panel so far. Kind of Dylan off. knows how to do a panel. Suzanne, Let's put it that and way. And Sprouticus will be going first to respond. Uh, or do you want to go last because more people might make comment towards you? What do you think? I'd like to go last. Okay, so we're going to go to Zan first. 
Okay, yeah. Uh, really quickly, I just want to respond to what the Turks said a moment ago before uh, we moved on from that, um, because I think there might be a misunderstanding here. Uh, I want to make this very clear. You could have me on here and rant about it all day. Uh, I completely disagree with the way that platforms, specifically YouTube, because that's my ballpark for the most part, engage in their enforcement of TOS. I don't like that it's mostly done by bots. I don't like the fact that uh, there's situations like what would just happen with Mudahar, some ordinary gamers who uh, made a video debunking scam content and warning people about it, got a false strike, submitted an appeal, and two minutes later, it, with it being completely impossible for the video to get, to, get appealed, uh, was rejected. I don't like that you have to be a large YouTuber to have that responded True, to. Good faith I think the way that YouTube and platforms like this engage We're in TOS needs today. to be overhauled, so there's a lot more communication between Thank the content you all for being creator here. and the platform Subscribe to ensure that to my content YouTube creator is, is aware like. of what's going on. Even if this was like Nick Fuentes getting banned, I would want YouTube to have contact with him directly, a person to say, this is why you're getting banned, these are your infractions, and 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 here's how you can try to appeal it. Um, so I just want to make sure there's no ambiguity there. And then um, really quickly, I just want to leave my final statement as a response to uh, something small that Sprouticus has brought up about whether or not Nick Fuentes has been charged. He is not, from my understanding. I know he's under investigation. I know he's on an FBI no-fly list, but he has admitted that he took part and helped organize the uh, Capitol riot. But I'll go ahead and leave uh, leave it off with this quote from Nick Fuentes really quick. Uh, don't worry, I'll leave out any slurs, okay? Um, this was a quote from Nick Fuentes. There's a video of it if you want a source on it. I am unapologetic. I thought the Capitol riot was awesome. It was awesome. And so was Trump. And Trump was awesome because he was racist. Trump was awesome because he was sexist, Fuentes stated. And the only thing Trump wasn't awesome for was being anti-Semitic. He wasn't anti-Semitic. So I just want to leave it off on that. But Trump wasn't an anti-Semite. Gotcha, cucks. Anyway, we're going to go next over to Turk. Uh, I was going to ask Demon Mama if she thought that I was one of those uh, conservatives that think it's a huge conspiracy theory. Because if you go back to my... Hold on a second. Sorry, I'm benchmarking, doing work. Uh, if you go back to my opening statement, I said that, yes, conservatives are being censored, but also the left is being censored. And I think the problem is, is the people that are being censored on the left is not being as uh, visible on some sites or news outlets because uh it's not as concerning to some people you know i i hear about these things and that's why i i'm in favor of not banning people i am mu very much in favor of uh free speech and t i think you'll mischaracterize my statement about the whole youtube thing it's like i hope these things get, get turned around because uh, xander i agree that the bots should not be in charge of uh saying you deserve to be uh stricken or you should be removed from a platform because that is not uh, fair and balanced, like most people would like to see in a free country. So uh, I think that Nick Fuentes probably should have been banned, and uh, Twitter is a private company. They're allowed to do such a thing. And, you know, I wish they would enforce TOS uh, consistently across all accounts, not, not, not people, not organizations, but accounts. We have no disagreement there. Okay. Uh, we're going to throw it over to Supreme. Uh, I just want to address the mischaracterizations and my Wait, mischaracterizations. You will get an extra oh. 20 seconds to speak for your cat. Okay, continue. Okay. All right. Uh, here's what I want to say. Unlike unlike uh, uh, my compatriots on this panel, I don't want uh, the content on Twitter to be, uh, you know, to be moderated equally because it's just not practical. It's not pragmatic. I'm with you, Connor. Uh, I wanted to address this a long time ago. I'm not going to shed any tears if tankies get banned off Twitter for, you know, denying Holocaust or whatever, and I even think they should. However, I think we ought to be able to recognize... Uh, that there's half a billion tweets a day. Um, it's it is humanly impossible for there to be uh, for, for there to be moderation of Twitter without automation, um, and that we ought to prioritize what gets moderated based on the influence that Twitter users have, right? So Donald J. Trump is is a lot different, right? Uh, uh, inciting a riot at the Capitol is a lot different than uh, anime Stalin 420, fucking you know posting like 10 one out of 60 billion uh, tweet thread about like denying the Holocaust or whatever the fuck, right? Like, uh, at the end of the day, like, it's about uh, the impact that, that these people are going to have, and we ought to prioritize how we moderate things in, in that way. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really don't care about this topic. It's fucking dumb. I really don't care how Twitter exercises its, uh, its moderation. And the chicken says that she would also appreciate if I got off Twitter, because it's bad for our relationship. I don't pet her enough. That's it. True. I'm going to throw it over to Nacho. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the fact is that there's some solutions to this issue, and uh, both sides have been a victim of these censors. Yet the only thing that 
comes up whenever we talk about this is like an attempt to justify like whether or not their side should or shouldn't be banned and why the other side should and all the while like the corporations are in control of the mainstream true. narrative and the and the platform and the town square that we're that's all not, i don't think anybody uh, supposed to be that, um, able to participate on so again um you know so, i mean some people were so willing to defend their own side that they were trying to pretend that like twitter and and facebook and all these places are not the town square which i thought was pretty bizarre uh the if you want to get a message out you're going to these platforms that's the bottom line so either we need to provide another option some kind of like usps version of p probably going to be a piece of shit social media platform but at least it's an option that's that's a government option that's provided to us it can exist in tangent just like fedex and and amazon and ups exist in tangent to like the usps this could be an option this could be a solution moving forward or we can try to like re um redefine like those words uh and more strictly word like the section 230 part but uh, i mean other than that I, i'm kind of with supreme like this is just a stupid fucking topic and at the end of the day the, they're private corporations you're never going to be able to strong arm them into uh you know upholding the first amendment that's it i'm gonna throw it over to, to, to connor sweet Love it. Um, yeah, so uh, Demon Mama, I wasn't trying to be prescriptive. I was trying to be descriptive. So I was just trying to make like a, a logical um, logical sequence of if conservatives engage in negative behavior, that might have a selection bias for them being banned for that negative behavior. And then I'm pretty sure if I Google bias, that'll follow. It's not a question of whether or not it's good, uh, but, but I would just say whether or not it controls the Overton window um, in favor of either more moderate behavior or more liberal behavior. So let's segment that out. Um, so I also wanted to make a comment about why I think online commentary favors the right wing. Um, and I think that's because the mainstream uh, favors like the moderate left. Um, if you look at MSNBC, CNN, all those programs or whatever, it seems like there's enough like uh, social public propaganda in the mainstream that is kind of like centrist, moderate left pretty much. Uh, whereas the right wing doesn't really feel representative. All they have is uh, Tucker Carlson and Fox News. Um, so they have to create their own heroes. And I think that's why there's an imbalance when it comes to the popularity of right-wing content on social media content. But obviously you can't go too far. Uh, once you start talking about the Jewish question or uh, you know brain sizes or phrenology or race realism or something like that, um, you're gonna start getting banned. Now, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. I'm being descriptive, not prescriptive here. Um, so Supreme um, basically brought up how, uh, I think this is one of the strongest points is that it's a question of volume. Um, you know, these things are incredibly difficult to co control. Um, even if you assign people to it, it'd be very difficult to control. The algorithms are imperfect. We're all victims of the algorithm. I get hit for fair use all the time. I basically have to submit half my videos for fair use claims. Um, and so basically what I would advocate for is a new category of publisher versus platform, uh, a new a new set of rules that uh, includes the volume considerations of a social media platform. And that could be the title, social media platform that basically reduces the liability of these platforms because they, after all they're hosting speech, um, but also gives them some powers in order to moderate their content because we, we half of us are on twitter.com and we all know that is an unmitigated hellscape, even with the amount of uh, you know moderation that we already have. Um, and I, I, I am not gonna shit on Twitter, by the way. I enjoy it. This morning, I quote t tweeted a parody account of Vosh taking it dead seriously and I got ratioed before I even had my fucking morning cup of coffee. And I was like, only on Twitter could this beautiful social interaction happen. So uh, I hate and love Twitter in equal measure. I'll leave it there. And uh, thank you. Okay. Next, we're going to be throwing it over to Hans. All right. Um, not trying to retread anything. Obviously, if you actually want to change how these platforms operate to hopefully like save more people, this is like largely for Spartacus, but everyone in the audience as well, you either can leave it, the TOS as it is, you can start holding these platforms accountable for the things people say on them, which I promise will have even more censoring and more deep platforming because they'll, if they're legally liable for shit, they'll start banning anyone. I got a warning for saying, uh, give your energy to spirit bomb someone in, uh, out, like in Georgia during like the election. And like that was just like you know they said bombs like be careful even though it was, it was a Dragon Ball Z reference but 
and the last thing is you have like government regulate everything like connor said having cops going around like going to people's houses to make sure like tweets go all these three things all these three things all of them sound like absolutely fucking horrible uh but the tos one seems like it's most functional in terms of how we operate if we want more transparency like xander uh, has been talking about then absolutely we obviously need that it feels really cringe when you get like to when you get tos or when you get a strike for something that you don't really understand or really understand why uh that would be super helpful but as it is this is like the best of all the horrible worlds. Like I don't see a, a functioning platform where free speech is magically going around and we only ever hit the bad people or we let all the bad people go around and then just perfectly insulate everyone from like the most horrendous statements possible. We have to make choices. And right now we live in a capitalist society that will make the choices based on marketability. And I'm sorry, it turns out being a Nazi just isn't making anyone fucking money anymore. Unless you're Nick Fuentes, but he's also struggling because he can't get a credit card, which is fucking hilarious. All right, anyway, that's all I got. Okay, next we're going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Um, yeah, so one small thing that I wanted to just push a little bit back on on Connor, though I think Connor touched on a lot of things that I would agree with. Um, I think that uh, with regard to the right wing in the mainstream, I think it's largely a matter of self-definition. Um, remember that Fox News is the most popular news channel in the country, and um, Rush Limbaugh is the mo was <laughs> was the most popular news presenter in the world of all time as in uh, so like when it comes to radio rush limbaugh and rush limbaugh's associates were most of most of talk radio across america there's literally almost no liberal or left-wing representation in america on the radio so uh, but republicans and and right-wingers frequently insist mostly inspired by donald trump that like the mainstream media is somehow slanted to the left in this really major way that does again the facts just don't actually point out to that um that's one of the problems i have about this entire conversation is that there's loads of conspiracy claims there's loads of i'm being discriminated against this there's a there's an attempt to change the narrative in this way and there's almost never any evidence actually presented the evidence that does exist shows um, much, it reveals a much different conversation. We run into things like YouTube uh, demonetizing any video that got tagged with LGBTQ um, tags at all. That happened like a few years ago and people forget about that. That was something that happened and we don't hear that come up. Um, and the reason is, is that it's a different discussion. It's, it's not really a discussion so much about, about free speech, but how these companies use these algorithms and what we need to do about addressing that problem. Um, but yeah, um, more or less, I think that this, this topic is, is largely used to try and maintain the platform of people who actually ruin platforms. Um, people like Nick Fuentes make platforms worse. They make it so that people can't enjoy themselves on there. They interrupt the actual function of it. And they also often do actual societal harm. And I think that these companies have a reasonable, even if you're a lefty, you have a reasonable right to say, no, we don't want that shit in our space. And that doesn't have to be a First, first Amendment issue. And it isn't a First Amendment issue. Thank you. Okay, and now we're going to wrap it up with Sprouticus. Okay, um, I, I just want, I, I want to point out I want to point out some things here. Um, Dima Mama goes on about how it's uh, how it's consistently we don't bring facts. We've asked for the facts. We've consistently asked Facebook. We've asked Twitter. We've asked the Google um, to give us who's been banned, why they were banned, and then we can go through that play by play. Google, Twitter, uh, Facebook, they've all denied this. Even Congress asked for it. And they denied Congress to be able to see this. Um, they're holding back the facts. So you can keep talking about facts all you want. When a company holds back facts, then we don't have all the facts to talk about it. So when you say they're not bringing the facts, it's because they're not releasing them. Um, so moving past that, Connor, I don't know Pouticus, what exactly yeah. you meant by you, you served during Global War on Terror. I served during Global War on Terror as well. Um, it, so I, if you're actively trying to recruit to a terrorist organization, then that's already against the freedom of speech. That's not something that that's not that's not something that I would propose uh, that would should be allowed. Brain shutting um, down. I, th right I thought I made that perfectly clear. Evidently, I didn't make it clear enough. Um, so the publisher versus platform, there's obviously a huge difference between publisher versus platform. And as DMO pointed out, there can be a, there can be per portions of sites that are platforms on a publisher's site. Just like if I post on Facebook something, I can get sued for what I say. Facebook can't get sued for what I say. Same idea. Um, and the no evidence of bias. I wanted to address that as well. Um, there is the, oh, I already, I already did address that. I apologize. Um, it's kind of circling through. 
Um, but I'm just I'm I'm astounded um, by these wild mischaracterizations of me. And um, just in <laughs> case, just in case people think that I'm defending <laughs> Nick Fuentes, uh, fuck Nick, fuck Nick. Pride Month was last month, uh, by the way. So we're going to move on to the next topic of the day, which is going to be immigration. Uh, recently, there was a big kerfluffle around the uh, issue of uh, there being a surge. Then there was a big kerfluffle about the idea of Kamala Harris visiting the border. And I heard earlier about somebody wanting Nancy Pelosi visiting to visit the border. So the question is simple. How is the Biden administration, you know, dealing with the topic of immigration? And how should we tackle the topic of immigration? And how is this comparable to the last administration? It's just a general topic about immigration. You could kind of take it in any direction, but those are some framing questions I'm going to throw out to the, uh, to the crowd. Is there anybody who wants to take us off first? Anybody wants to take us off the ground first? Uh, sure. Demon uh, Mama yeah. was first. Yeah, I'll, I'll open up. Um... Sorry, I, I thought that the immigration was the one that we were we were bumping off, but uh, but that's fine. Um, so uh, uh, okay, so there's a number of ways that I can approach this. Um, with regard to if we're talking about the Biden administration, I don't think that the Biden administration has um, adequately addressed the issues with immigration in our country. Um, we still have massive detention facilities that are detaining children. Um, this is horrible. This is a, a human rights violation that we should take very, very seriously. Uh, this is something that I've criticized Biden for and will continue to criticize Biden for from the left. Um, uh, however, uh, I'm sure we're going to hear all kinds of, of various types of fear mongering about the damage that scary immigrants do to our economy and whatever. Uh, I just want to get out in front of that by saying that this is simply not true. Every single piece of credible evidence that we have every single economic research paper even ones from right-wing sources have shown that immigration actually just helps the economy there are very few people if any who are negatively affected by an increase in immigration if people are coming here it's because there's jobs it's because there op there's opportunities and those people also being people have needs which improve um, which which improve our economy. They they both fill and create new needs. Um, we don't have a space issue uh, in the United States. We have some issues with housing, but I would say that's an issue of uh, how we uh, delegate housing and not necessarily how much housing we have. Um, and the only actual uh, demographic of people in this country who are impacted at all negatively by um, immigration um, is a, a very small slice of, of people who are high school dropouts. And keep in mind that the, the decrease in their average wage is so minor as to be much cheaper to offset, not by uh, building a police state around enforcing immigration, but rather just by giving stimulus for people to finish high school. It's cheaper and it's better to do it this way. Fear-mongering over immigration is a... Is a America first obsession that doesn't actually have its grounds in reality and it is almost always uh, coming from some sort of misguided notion of keeping America pure even if that's not what people say on the face is it alright if I add a bit uh, I mean you can go after well, sure throw it to Zan Xander Hall next but we're going in like an order here so Xander Hall next I can go Yes, it's the Xander Hall next. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I just wanted to add on a little bit to what Demon Mama said because our minds are on the same track in, in this respect. So I, it, it'd be weird to like cut him up. But uh, yeah, I think Biden's administration is handling things uh, not how I would like to see it handled for the most part. I think there have been some improvements. I think Kamala Harris recently did a speech um, about how they're going to be. Uh, giving fun i think billions of dollars in support to guatemala to help root out corruption and the power of crime and gangs in the country which is an impetus for a lot of people to make the dangerous journey to try to illegally immigrate into america um we obviously know that the wall would be useless most illegal immigration is done through overstaying uh v work visas for example um just like demon mama said it's been overwhelmingly demonstrated that immigration does not harm the economy it doesn't harm the lives of people who live here immigrants commit commit less crime relative to the native population. They still pay taxes in the form of gas tax, property tax, depending on the state uh, sales tax. Um, overall, it seems like it's just a net benefit. And I do agree that it's usually people who have some ulterior motives whenever they, they rail against immigration. That's all I have to say. Okay. 
Next, we're going to throw it over to Sprouticus. There's a difference between legal and illegal immigration. That's how, that's how I'm going to start this statement off. Is there's a difference between legal and Here illegal go. immigration. Most, actually, all the conservatives I talk to agree that, yeah, we, legal, legal, L-E-G-A-L, immigration is great and needs to happen inside the United States of America. Illegal immigration is not. Um, so illegal immigrants, they come over, um, they skip the line. Um, when illegal immigrants come over, we, we could take less legal immigrants because we have less room um, during that year. We can only take so many immigrants per year. Um, there's a cap on that. Uh, but moving, moving past that, it, they skip the line. Um, so legal immigrants can't come. The ones who have been waiting six years um, trying to get in can't come. Um, and you can always try to claim asylum if you're scared for uh, your own safety inside of your own country. Um, that, that, that is a process. You don't need to become an illegal immigrant to go through the asylum process. Um, but it's funny that people are saying the wall's not going to stop anything. Um, I mean, it's, it's surely not going to stop anything. It's going to slow things down, such as MS-13, um, which I didn't know MS-13 came over and did such such great things for the United States of America. Um, if they did, go ahead and post that. Uh, but they, they definitely do cause harm to the United States of America. And that's what the border wall is specifically designed um, to stop is the human smuggling, MS-13, um, gangs, drugs, et cetera, and so on. Um, and so when you when you take a look at it that way, it paints a whole different picture than what the left is going to try and paint that these are just these are just poor people that need to do this, need to do that, and that's why the wall was put there was to keep these poor people out, and they they, they don't, well, they don't you. just be able to come to the United States of America, and you know it, this has just happened. Okay, so it's it, it's the wall was not designed for those people. The wall was designed for I'm the psychic. MS13 problem that we have obviously in California, obviously in Arizona in these border states we have this MS-13 problem and that's what the wall is designed to uh, keep out um, I think if you're here as an illegal immigrant um, you should be deported I don't care how long you've been here you broke the rules if you'd like to try and come back um, then try and come back legally um, and try to do it the legal process and wait just like everyone else has to unless of course you fear for your life then you can go through the asylum process which is a more expedited process and uh, you can try to do it that way as well Okay, I'm going to throw it over to America Nacho. What did I say, everybody? Psychic. Uh, yeah, so this isn't, this isn't just a case of like, um, or like a question of like how many, how many people and how much land. It's, it's more of like what kind of system that you have. So like, for example, New Zealand, New Zealand's population is like half that of New York City, and they have all kinds of barriers against immigration. They have 30 million sheep and like 4.9 million people. And uh, that's vast amount of, of uh, available land. But once you set foot there, you you get um, you have access to like all kind of benefits, and therefore the taxpayers are pretty adamant about uh, keeping their border secure, keeping secure like what, who gets into immigration, like how many people they're going to let in per year, etc. Um, the same kind of thing happens in Germany, and that's why you see like great hostility towards immigrants sometimes in Germany and many other countries. Like this is not like a unique situation where oh it's just America, like we're just the worst person on the planet because we want to secure our borders. Um, if you're pro uh, mask. In my opinion, you should be pro wall, right? This is not a solution that's like the end all be all cure what? to uh, immigration. We're never going to have illegal immigration if we put up a wall. No, but it will help, right? We've already seen cases um, this no, it year, won't. or yeah, I think this year, or, or at least in the past like year or two years, where the sections of wall that we already have put up have been like cut through, right? So now we know, well, this is a focus point. This is somewhere we can patrol a little bit heavier and we can stop these kind of things from happening. Um, so I'm also pro uh, legal immigration and 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 pretty much against um, illegal immigration. That's pre that's pretty much my stance. Oh, this okay. is gonna be fun. I'm gonna throw it over to Connor. Thanks, buddy. Um, so um, I, I know that in 2016 or 2017, a bunch of right-wing pundits tried to make the economic argument. I don't give a fuck about that argument. Let's just like move past it and concede it already that like immigrants are a net positive to the economy because otherwise we're just going to be here all fucking night. Um, yep. What I do care about, what has to be maintained no matter what levels of immigration we do is the defense of a liberal republic. It's something that I care about. It's not just bullshit to me. It's not just an ideology to me. It's actually a series of principles that I hold near and dear that I want to perpetuate. Um, uh, Sprouticus and I probably agree most on this situation that I think the Constitution is fucking based. Um, and I think it's a it's an incredible document that sets up uh, a pretty cool structure. 
Um, the three things that I care about most are the freedom of conscience, the right to self-defense, including against the government, and limited government, meaning that the government follows its own rules. I also believe in a state. I am not an anarchist. I believe in a state as a necessary administrative body that provides essential goods and services to a society. Thank you, Gamer Girl. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you so much for the tier three sub. is a pipe dream, um, and Twitter is the example of why it's a pipe dream. Um, I wanted to just briefly address immigrant, immigrant crime rates uh, being less than that of the native population. I think that's true. Um, I also think that's partially a reporting issue. Um, unfortunately, a lot of immigrants are the victims of crimes. Uh, sometimes they're victims within their own community and they don't report it because they don't want to be deported. Um, I think there's something that we could probably do in order to try to bring them into the fore, uh, because obviously that's fucked up. If you get stabbed or robbed and you can't even report it to the police uh, or rate, um, and you can't even report it to the police because you fear deportation. So we have to do something. Oh my God. Um, oh my also, God. I have a compromise solution. Um, I think we can annex all the way down to Panama. Um, and then we can uh, help Colombia restore the uh, the idea of Simone Bolivar to reconstitute Grand uh, Grand Colombia. So Colombia basically rules all of South America, and then uh, North America, you know, becomes its own thing. Um, and then basically we go from the United States of America, like pussy ass Virgin United States of America, to the United States of America, literally a continent spanning empire that uh, you know basically benefits all. Um, all right, so I'm going to quote one more thing, and then I'm going to let go. Um, so basically, there's a movie that I'm reviewing. It's called Full Metal Jacket. It's phenomenal. It's about the Vietnam War. Um, and in it, it says politically incorrectly that inside every Vietnamese person, he uses a different term, is an American. I believe that. I think there's certain ideological virtues that we hold that are universal that need to be promoted. And I don't think that we can use immigration that's, as a solution to solve all the world's problems. That's a satire. I think that we need to promote stability abroad. Yield. Okay, we're gonna throw it over to the Turk. Yes, I've been in these immigration panels on this uh, show several times, and I, you know, I'm I'm still a really compassionate person. I really would like for immigrants to uh, come and be taken care of and all of that good stuff. And I'm I'm really delighted to hear from two of the people, uh, other people on the panel, that they are not happy with how uh, the Biden administration is handling the current crisis if you call it a surge or crisis whatever it doesn't matter so i'm really interested in hearing what are some of the solutions because uh not a lot of people are for the wall you know i don't want to talk about the wall this is biden's administration so i'm, I'm interested how you want to increase funding how you want to increase the amount of camps and processing centers as well as uh, judges None. and uh attorneys that are willing to uh help speed some of these processes up uh because you know i would like for people to be accounted for and tallied and got properly accounted for instead of them coming illegally because we are a nation of laws and if i could quote biden when he was talking about the olympic uh olympian who you know got tested for thc or whatever it's like there there are rules and you know you go into this knowing those rules beforehand so we've got to follow the rules wonderful now we're going to throw it over to supreme um, man, my thoughts on this are kind of scattered. And unlike Connor, I'm not just going to concede directly that there's a direct relationship between more immigration and greater economic growth, because I've been looking into this and this seems to be something that's still pretty hotly debated between scholars and professionals in the field. Um, and, and there are a lot of, there are, it's a very, it's a really complex topic with a lot of, you know, dynamic elements. There are a lot of elements to be considered and there are a lot of studies, uh, you know, this, the social science on this, uh, I guess, per se, is largely still underdeveloped. There are just so many factors to consider and like population planning is, is such an important discipline when it comes to urban development. And it's like really, um, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not super well prepared for this, but there are really strong arguments for, um, you know, first off, like considering immigrants as one amalgus group, uh, where where one is is uh, you know like has has all the same details and uh, qualifications as the next is is kind of fallacious. There are a lot of problems potentially with the fact that like a large influx of undocumented immigrants means that like payroll taxes for that group. Um, you know, don't get paid. And if, you know, like there are a lot of social services, roads, education and stuff that rely on municipal and state funding, which, you know, states and municipalities have to work within their budgets. 
and those budgets are projected based on population and suddenly you have you know like uh, an influx of people that that are having to use those those systems that are requiring more maintenance and, and more upkeep and stuff it requires greater funds and it's like an investment period it's not the case that as soon as a bunch of people move this into this nonsense. place then the economy goes he up, 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 up and everyone's you know great and fine there is a potential for there to be uh like potential um periods of negative impact that that could pose a danger of not recovering. And I think this has been the case with, uh, you know, Miami. I was reading about the Miami boat lifts today and, and how, um, you know, we're, that's still not solved to this day. Um, what is he talking you know, about? We enjoy a lot of freedom of movement in this country. And, and in order to, like, achieve this, we kind of rely on market forces by and large for this. Like, in order to move in this country, there's nothing particularly forbidding you from doing so, so long as you're not a convicted felon or something like that. I guess there are some restrictions that apply Money? there. But aside from that, Money? as long as you can find a job and a place to live, uh, you're not you're not restricted from moving from place to place. And this is like, uh, you know, when when visas are granted, like work visas and and the like, uh, they're done with the uh, you know with the foreknowledge of where people are going to go. And this is another part of like population planning uh, that ends up being really helpful to urban developers. And this is so weird. you know, I can s I understand a lot of the arguments, which are hotly contested to this day. Where no, like not. a lot of that's you know, a true. large influx of undocumented immigrants can can pose a lot of problems for municipalities. They can raise rent prices for low income housing and stuff uh, very quickly. I mean, not can that's actually pretty much solved. It has a tendency to create ethnic enclaves, which reduces mobility uh, for for like ensuing uh, generations of people that are descendants of of those undocumented immigrants, and it, it creates cycles of poverty uh, that are like you know this is this is aided by further vetting. Uh, through our natural immigration no, process what are you talking and, and like about, visa dude? granting process so yeah i just i just don't want to give carte blanche to the idea that you know more immigration just letting people in i i'm not super amenable to the open borders uh, argument anymore after reading up on this sure okay we're gonna throw it over to hans and then uh Dima, you haven't gone yet correct uh no i went first but i i'll i oh, have sorry. some things okay. i'd like okay. to say it so, once once we open well, up but. okay so I'm going to throw it to Hans, and I believe that everybody else is gone, so then it will open up. I have to use the bathroom desperately, so I'll be right back. Uh, these glasses. Uh, also, everybody for chat, here's a game. Every time uh, Xander Hall uh, blows a, a ring, just take a shot. Um, that might be me doing a very dangerous thing to chat, but just throwing it out there. Be right back, guys. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. On, so it's hard to blow good ones. There's too much air movement. Oh gosh! Like I was gonna say, like we're, I didn't know there was gonna be a drinking game. I, I would have bought like beer. I, I, I've been doing a dry a couple of days. I'm trying to, trying to like, take care of my health, get rid of my beer belly that I got during COVID. But um, I've switched from beer and alcohol to weed. I've been just getting, been, get, I've been getting high every night listening to the PKA well, podcast. I'm starting a beer. It's so. fun. It's like it just doesn't work for me. I don't know why. I just like uh, I we yeah we just it just doesn't it just doesn't hey, do it for me debate immigration you whores what are you doing <laughs> what are, I, I, I thought we're waiting for dylan yeah i didn't know if i was supposed to go no, like i i i, 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 I was nervous that i would have to shout people down during my opening statement and like uh, I was, I was like and, and, and everyone like dylan is gone uh i am in the center of the ring which means i am now the moderator um hello everyone well, you're uh, doing is... moderate yourself okay make yourself oh, speak I was like, no, we gotta wait. Like, because what if Spraticus needs to hear what I say? Maybe I might mischaracterize him. I don't want. Uh, I, 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 think I, I will never make. I will never mischaracterize yeah. someone unless it's to their face, in which I will do it like endlessly, and I will never ever stop. Um, Fair enough. Like, since, I, I, I think since homies Dylan's had a lot of. Uh, yeah, I think homies had a decent amount of talking time. I think we're all right. <laughs> I was. I was well, that was Honda's yeah! opening statement. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, excuse me, uh, this is opening statements. I don't know why there's back and forth going on here. Oh, uh, I can, I'm cooking food and I hear back and forth. No, Hans, this is opening statements. No interrupting. Hans, complete your opening the, statements. The, the, then why are, the, why are you interrupting me right now? It's like Katarana. Because everybody Katarana. else is talking. Opening statements, Katarana. Hans, please. You have 60 just... seconds on the clock. I have 60 seconds on the clock? I was waiting for Dylan. I, I thought he, I, I feel like he you want, want to know, like, my, my high level I'm ideas. You need to know. <laughs> okay, go. I'm being bullied. Thank you for the Dylan subs. being silenced. All right, all right, everyone. Real talk. All right, let's let's get serious. So, everyone is uh, Demon Mama and Xander Hall have made excellent moral arguments. I'm not going to retread them. I'm going to start talking about big, meaty, thick logistics. So, 
uh, my issues with the Biden administration is largely that we're not putting enough money into our immigration system. Uh, whether you're uh, whether you want less immigration, whether you want more immigration, I think we should all agree that having an underfunded immigration system that does not see cases swiftly, that does not say like bar immigration, it, like leaves people at the border unnecessarily for weeks at a time, potentially even months. I think that is absolutely abhorrent. If someone is applying for immigration, we should be able to process them quickly and efficiently. And then if that is the case, we should start allowing them into the country. Uh, for the case of illegal uh, immigrants on uh, like inside our nation, if you want to, if we want to use like the term that Spradick has said, uh, I don't want to mischaracterize them by using a different word. Um, I want to, if I want to protect American workers, I think the best way to do that would be to legalize all of the illegal immigrants and then start using labor protection so they don't undercut American labor if you're really, 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 really worried about American workers. If we want to make sure that we're doing that, uh, we, we should probably make sure that people aren't getting paid bye, $2 Leah. a Thanks day uh, to undercut farm workers. So we should probably be paying them, you know, minimum wage. And hopefully that minimum wage is a living wage. So hopefully we can put more money to fix our broken immigration system so we can process people more quickly. And then as a uh, bleeding heart lefty, I want more immigration. I think immigration is based in poggers. Um, I come from a small rural town and it kind of sucks and sad because it's just a bunch of white bread and uh, we don't have good food. Uh, so I want to make our country better. I want to make it more diverse. I want to make it stronger. And I want to protect everyone, whether they're domestic workers here or whether they're illegal workers or just whether they're like any flavor of worker here, I want them to have the same labor protections like that everyone deserves, and I want the labor protection in the United States to be stronger. And the way you do that is by funding our fucking immigration system, by training more judges, training more, uh, like, you know, public uh, assistance for this. And, uh, yeah, that's how we get to it. Whether you're right or left, I hope we can agree on that. Okay, now it is open uh, to the room. I see a lot Hell of people yeah. raising their hands. And, okay, let me be clear about uh, how hand raising is supposed to work. It isn't just a declaration of, I must speak. You raise your hand when you've like shown clearly. It was like I can't get into this because this is too chaotic. Then I'll write it down, get it over to you. So it isn't just like a declaration of please, I want to speak. It's like a, it was like kind of like a last resort. Like fuck, I can't get in there. So let's not raise our hands right off the bat. Yeah. Well, I raise my hand because I want to be polite and not get interrupted whenever I'm, I do. I, I, I'm ready to get in there. Yeah, Put me, me too. I'm ready too. I'm gonna get all. I love. Of it I, love I love Turk, but like, I don't want to get rid of fucking just steamroll him. So I'm gonna give it to Turk first. Sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm really glad that wait, Hans wait. had a pretty good similar stance that I have. My question to Hans is gonna be, how are you gonna pay for it? So we are a country of limited resources. We're already trying to pass all sorts of other progressive what? agenda items. We're the richest uh, that country in the world. Substantial increases in taxes to some corporations, some people, etc. How are you planning on funding this? Uh, Absolutely. I have an excellent answer for this. So one, uh, illegal immigrants pay uh, less taxes than they would if they were legal. And also, if they were legal, they would probably be making more money. So if you have legalized workers inside the United States, they're probably paying more taxes, which can help benefit the system. And then if we have... Uh, I would probably say that we would have less issues and less logistical problems in terms of like dealing with the immigration system if we were finally able to smooth everything over. Because right now we literally have like tent cities of tens of thousands of people like at the southern border waiting to be processed. And that is a logistical nightmare, taking resources, money, all sorts of stuff. And yes, like if, I'm not saying it's ever going to be perfect. There's always going to be waiting times, right? But in the case of say like missing children, unaccompanied minors, that sort of stuff right yeah, there, this is right? A good panel. Uh, they're supposed to be legally processed within like say, I think it's like three weeks or some shit like that. So if we want to do that, if we want to follow our own laws, it's time to pump some more fucking money. If that means raising taxes, then we got to raise taxes. That means you have to raise taxes on like, you know, the immigrants themselves, like who are now making living wages. We can fucking do that. Like, here's the thing. Our government is exceptional at finding money for things it deems necessary. And when it doesn't seem something necessary, it doesn't like seem to give a shit. I think, uh, fixing our immigration system is extremely necessary and i'm willing to pump however much money it takes into it to fix it. i don't think it's going to be a multi-trillion dollar process i think it just means we should probably uh i think right now our immigration system is about six times slower in terms of like the average number of days that it takes for somebody to get processed it's like 120 days as opposed to like 21 and we're supposed to do it in three weeks so that means we have to probably uh what's right what's the five times uh, quintuple uh our budget uh, for immigration so we can get like enough people hired for our immigration system and whatever that ends up being I'm totally fine paying that price. I hope that answers your question. Hans, are you speaking about asylum? Are you speaking about asylum seekers or uh, legal immigration because there's a huge difference between the two. Are you speaking about asylum seekers? Uh, both. 
Uh, okay, because like, legal like, legal immigration is a list. You're on a list, and it typic, typically I, I know. it's my, my, my dad's okay. an immigrant. Yeah, I know. I, I okay, know so that. okay, yeah. so it's it's not just 120 days. Typically, it's years because of how big our list is. Uh, we can't just accept we can't just accept the entire world into the United States of America. Um, that, that's just not realistic. Um, you saw what happened when Great Britain overdid its immigration, um, and now Great Britain has a lot of problems due to that. Like um, what? But like what? What? Like what? Immigrants not following the laws they've had I've actually had terrorists. Oh, can you give an example of that though? So they didn't have it. Yeah, I can I, you let me give me a second So they actually have they've actually had terrorist attacks recently um, due to uh, due to letting terrorists in um, by not actually doing the background checks on, on immigration. This is proven. It's been fact checked. Um, I'll find it. I'll find it for you. I'll post it. I'll post it in Dylan's chat for you mm. once I get the chance. Um, once I'm not talking that way, I'm not um, doing two things at once. But um, mm -hmm. what I what I am saying is, uh, so are you, Hans? Are you for or against uh, like illegal? It sounds like you are for illegal immigrants. Um, becoming legal immigrants right you're, yeah. you're for that okay um i i would i would almost 100 percent disagree with you there uh because they broke the rules there were there were rules there were laws they consciously broke them knowing that the knowing that that would put them where they are today um and when when you break the rules and there's people that are waiting and just hoping and praying they'll get that they'll get that letter or their that email or however we send out uh immigration request uh grants right so however we send those out they're just praying and hoping they'll hear back from america um they broke the rules that decided to skip the entire line decided they were more important than everybody else so since they decide they're more more important than everybody else i say deport them back to the country of origin and when and then they can try and come back again if they'd like to um or if they don't like if they try to uh, try and immigrate somewhere else feel free um but if you're gonna sit here and break the rules and say you're more important than everybody else then no you're you're now at the back of the line congratulations all right, so like uh, I don't know anything about the uh, Britain stuff, so I'll throw it to Demon Mama to respond to that after I like uh, respond like your sure. particular like uh, like border logistical question. Uh, yeah, I like in the case of the illegal workers, I am very much pro uh, you know worker regardless of whether they're illegal or not. And what I would ask you is how the fuck is it possible to suddenly like displace 11 million people and then adequately get them to go back home to their countries in any way that isn't a logistical fucking nightmare. What I'm saying isn't just a moral question. Damn. It's literally fucking impossible. We have 11 million people that are undocumented in the United States. How do we get them back to like Guatemala or like, you know, any flavor of like other South American countries? Like maybe someone's from Peru. How do we get them back to Peru? Like it takes so much energy and effort that I would much rather just legalize them, make sure they're not undercutting American labor by making sure everyone has the same labor protections and then make sure they're paying fucking taxes. If they stay here for a certain period of time yep. and then they go Hans back home, is such a then, like they don't get benefits. My father is an immigrant. Like I said, uh, I used to have Australian citizenship. I gave it up because America is the best country in the world, obviously. And I love my fucking nice. country so much. Uh, and Australia is uh, just sad British people, or nice British people, actually. Uh, and so, yeah, like, he will get benefits eventually. I'm not saying give everyone citizenship. There obviously should be a pathway if you live here long enough. Uh, like, options should be open to anyone who lives here long enough. But again, this isn't just an issue of, like, whether or not I think it's good and they broke the rules. I think they should be, like, you know, able to, like, participate in society, and they should start funding the society that they're participating in. I think so, that's a completely normal thing. And I'd also say, like, if we care about rule breaking so much, I don't know uh, why you were standing so hard for people who broke the rules on t TOS on Twitter last time, but uh, I really appreciate <laughs> so, it. So, uh, no, so what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm stating is that they said... Thank it was you, OK nice Bloomer. Thing. Thank you. No, stop. Jack Dorsey went went before Congress and testified that he that his platform. Here we go. Thank you, Oki Boomer. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Can I move on? No. Okay. Thanks, Hans. Okay, we muted both you and Hans. Let me be very clear. What topic is this? Immigration. Immigration. Thank you very much. So, can somebody, uh, Hans, can you tell me Jack Dorsey's immigration policy? I actually don't know it. I'm really sorry. I think yeah, okay. I, I, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Sproudicus, can you tell me Jack Dorsey's stance on immigration, what he has publicly stated? No. No, okay. So let's not talk about the, what the fuck Jack Dorsey has to say, or what the fuck anybody has to say about okay. the last topic. We're talking about this topic. So we're going to stay on topic, okay? Does everybody understand this? Yes. Yes, sir. Fucking crisscross applesauce. Wonderful. Yes. Now let's stay on topic. So, I want to apologize to Dylan first because I, I, I was... I was uh, said I was being um, 
not cr not uh, flip flopping kind of. So I just want to apologize for going off on that little rant. Um, no so how, how how so Hans, how do you how do we how do we take care of this problem, right? So you asked how how do we logistically take care of this problem? Well, I, first I, we let we first we let ICE do first we let ICE do what ICE does. Um, we let ICE find the uh, find illegal immigrants and deport them back to their country of origin, like ICE has been doing. Second, we go after the companies. Um, we go after the companies that are hiring illegal immigrants. Um, that make sure that they don't hire illegal immigrants. Uh, give these illegal immigrants zero money, zero work. Um, and eventually they will self-deport. Um, and it, the mixture of those two things will ensure that we were not uh, that the people who broke the rules go back and if they want to if they want to come back inside of America, then they could decide that they can uh, go through the legal process. And if they don't want to go through the legal process, that's fine. You can find a different country to go to. Um, but America is not the place for you. We're a country of laws, we're a country of uh, we're a country of law and order. Um, and we're going to keep it that way. So, um, yeah, so either you um, are going to follow the laws and come here legally, or you're going to come here illegally and take your chances of having no job, no work, or getting deported. All right, cool. So, like, okay. just quickly responding to that. I I ICE really wants to, like, stop them, right, if we care about ICE and their capabilities. ICE conducted 185,000 removals uh, during 2020, which means for them to successfully remove all of the immigrants, right, and I assume you want to do this, like, in a quick and logistically, like, a correct framework, in a year, that means their capacity would have to be increased by a factor of 55 more than 55. So if we're really going to pretend that we're going to be able to like massively deport everybody and that is the simple solution and funding ICE and like making it 55 Did times bigger. Did I say just bigger. ICE? Did I say just oh, ICE? I believe oh, I had a second oh, part oh, to that. I I, I it like doesn't matter what uniform right they're wearing. Like, it costs money, right? Yeah, it costs no, money. Like, how, like, I, I didn't say just like, 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 one, sprout. Like, one of the sprout. Thank you. Sprout. Hans, then Sprout. Sprout. I'm making a very basic argument. This is fun. It is this is fun. To keep this them has been here, a fun panel. To make them pay taxes, because right now they don't pay that much in taxes. And then, if they are here long enough, we can give them citizenship, because they're already here, they're already working here. And the process of removing them takes more money than if we just let them stay here and pay yes. taxes. Yes. This is not, this is not yes. me being a bleeding heart. This is me just saying, but in like the most like ice cold asshole position ever, being like, just you let them fucking stay. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm being I'm being so utilitarian. It's nuts. And like, right. I don't like I get that you like want to punish the bad people because they broke rules and we got to stop them. And that's fine. And I'm really sorry that we like we aren't going to be able to logistically do that because I just explained how it's fucking impossible unless you want to like such like five times is already a lot. I'll bite that bullet that like five times the amount of immigration lawyers and judges and stuff in courts. That's a lot of fucking money. I'll bite that bullet. But are we really going to massively expand immigration like like security so much that we can found literally millions of people and put them back at the same rate that they're coming in? It is so wrong. And if you want to expand courts, which I do, and we want to have more people like more like courts for asylum, we want to like we can argue about caps on immigration. I want them to go up. I assume you want them to go down. And that is totally fine. But I would say and a more important thing is funding our immigration system. And then if you want to start talking about deportations, I would say it's just not worth the money. And I'm really sorry. Like, again, like we want to punish the bad people, but like, here's just a strict utilitarian government. Like we always care about like, oh, there's homeless veterans and shit, right? There's not enough money to go around. You know what's a really fucking dumb waste of money? is we're kicking people out who are contributing to our economy, who aren't getting really any benefits from it, when they could be giving us more benefits if we just say, oh, you're legal now, please start paying your goddamn taxes. Yeah, um, uh, this is something, I, well, hold on, I've been trying to get in forever. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. I don't, by the way, I don't know who it is, but somebody has like an echo, and it is, it is not a false flag echo as, as uh, accused by Jason Hinkle, uh, Jackson Hinkle, but it is an echo, so please, somebody is gonna have please. to figure that out. Um, so everybody's raising their hand, and so I'm gonna go to the person <sighs> who has not Thank you, Azazel Bedazzle. that much. And so that person is, give me a second, Sprout. It's going to be Nacho after Sprouticus finishes responding. Okay. Well, I've been, I've had my head up for okay. so long. So, hand up I for mean, so long. I, I'm just curious. I'm, I mean, I, I'm genuinely curious on whether or not I accidentally muted myself during the second half of after I was done talking about ICE. Um, because that wasn't addressed Thank whatsoever. Thank you, Azazel Bedazzle. Um, Thank it, you. It, the uh, accusation that was made is that I wanted ICE to multiply by 55 times to make sure we could deport all the illegals. Um, that 
that that was the, I don't know if people just didn't hear the second half, but I'll just say the second half again just in case. Make sure I'm not muted here. All right, I'm good. All right, so now I'm going to go into what I said. I said that we go after the companies that are hiring illegals and Thank then you. make sure that the companies don't hire illegals, give the illegals zero money, zero work. We can even go after the banks um, that give illegals loans um, and make sure they don't get any loans, and eventually they'll self-deport. Um, so th that was the second half that evidently was missed entirely. Um, I didn't say I didn't say this multiply the ice. By, I, mean, I, say, I didn't say multiply ice by any time, any number. Um, and I said let ice do what ice does. Um, so with that being said, like that, that, that's what that's what I said. And it, it's very so very stupid. funny to me that they, they're just gonna leave out the entire second half of my solution and pretend like half of my solution was my entire solution. Um, I, I just find that hilarious. I can answer Dude. the second half too. Everyone, you know like, how long he talked about how we have to punish the banks and we have to punish the businesses. We have to try and starve the immigrants so that they'll flee back home. And we have to punish anyone who is participating in the illegal immigration system. That's a lot of fucking words. That's a lot of fucking things. You know what we could just do instead? Legalize them and then tax them as workers because they're okay. already working. Hans, I have a very simple question for you that I so, think is quite obvious. The right. simple question is, how does okay. this not in become a perverse incentive? How does, this not be okay. uh, how does this not become a perverse incentive? Uh, it already takes, them. like... How about uh, that? How do you feel about that, Hans? Legalize them, but fine them for, for like, an undocumented yeah, okay, crossing. Okay, okay. Can I... Can I just yeah, hop in, please, with my base centrist take, okay? Because I'm in the middle of basically both of you guys' position here. This I'm all here silly. for the law and order, Thank and you. I'm with Connor when he says, like, how do we not... How does this not become an incentive? Because that's what I'm afraid of, too, right? I don't want this to become like, oh, well, fuck going there legally, because if we go there illegally and we just say we've been there for like five years, then and we get to like uh, witnesses about? to like vouch for us, because some of this stuff was like in the Biden administration's like most recent bill that I, I think got passed or was like at least on the table. Um, so it, it, it would incentivize people to come here illegally because it would be maybe cheaper, even though it is more dangerous. It might be cheaper. It might be faster than waiting in line. Right. So. I'm also okay with like, let's look at all these cases. Let's because we have so many people that we're looking at deporting already, right? So if there's someone who like has a family, um, obviously they have incentive to work. They have incentive to participate in our like uh, economy. And I'm with Hans when you say like you care about the laborers. If you care about the laborers, then you definitely want these people to be legal and not illegal. Right. So you could look at each case individually and still deport a certain amount of people. And as a way to maybe pay for that process, you can find the countries where they're coming from or maybe find the individuals what? themselves. I don't know how you would go about that, but maybe there would be a way That's that absurd. you could enforce like some kind of tariff or some kind of like something on to, uh, to make sure that like maybe you should Again, police the cartel so better. Maybe you should. You know what I'm saying? Like. I it know seems what you're saying. Like like, around uh, somewhere. It seems like there's a policy that could kind of like cover please, and like uh, kill two birds with one stone. They, they sort of already have it, right? Uh, so, like, so what you can actually do that's very simple for this Thank you. is for, in terms of legalization, you can give them, uh, you can like legalize them, but you can either make them have a longer path to citizenship and say instead of like, you know, like, I don't know how many years it currently takes for like a legal like uh, immigrant to become a citizen, right? Maybe say, oh, you have to be here for 20 years before you can like start potentially getting like, know, those benefits Paulus, as a citizen, right? So you can say, oh, hey, like maybe your taxes are slightly higher uh, because you came in legally and like that's like a form of like economic punishment for say like you know uh, like a period of years like there's you can always have potential disincentives but like cotter i understand that like yes if we make it easier for people to come here more people will come here my only thing is that it's probably more humane to do that and our economy will grow and our population will grow if you want to have like you know that mighty billion like a uh, like strong america the best way to do that is to like encourage immigration and then just make sure they pay them taxes Okay, and, like, wait, so, and can I add real quick because I had a super well, like okay, like, okay, okay, but it's gotta be like sorry because I because... forgot to, okay. okay, I forgot to add this on the last one. So maybe it sounds like a meme, but it could probably work. Like, what if you took these illegal people Thank or you, like, in, immigrants in general Rogue and made them work Thank you for so the much for the raid. For Welcome, Rogue Not made them, but like you give them a job, and part of their job is to work for immigration services to help <laughs> pass through more like immigrants into the country, like. Sounds like a like a joke, but I mean, I don't know. No, why not? It's well, I mean, like, so, they have language experience, like, it, it could help. Like, okay, yeah. so sure. I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama, who's been waiting very patiently. Gonna Thank you. Demon Mama. Deeply appreciate that. Okay, and Turk. God, there's been there's been so much here that that has been talked about. So first of all, the the Sprouticus's like entire prescription is just like on its face ridiculous. The idea that that we would expand that we would expand. Uh, 
uh, enforcement and deportations, which is an incredibly expensive process that requires us to train up military, unique militarized uh, police and surveillance and all that's extremely expensive, extremely inefficient um, to crack down um, on people who are coming here frequently out of need they're going to come here one way or another because in many cases the alternative is to die so they're coming here for that and they are also providing value to our country is absurd but in addition this idea that like you can just tell corporations to stop hiring illegal immigrants they're called illegal immigrants they they're already not allowed to do that you're not you're going to have to enforce that which is going to be not more expensive illegal. you're going yeah. to have to ex in, excuse me i was talking i know it's hard um it was it's it, you're going to have to find a way to actually enforce that to surveil that and again that adds even more cost it is literally cheaper and more efficient for us to welcome people in even if that creates this quote unquote perverse incentive, which I don't buy. The perverse incentive isn't there because you should hand in hand simplify the immigration process. It is good for people to come here and it is good for us to not have to, um, to not have them uh, be running on the run and hiding from things. The more welcoming we are to people, the more likely they are to actually follow the rules that we set out if they're reasonable. Our current process is not reasonable in any way, shape or form. Um, and and so I don't think there's a perverse incentive that's created. There's always going to be a limit of the number of people who are moving to any one place. And you can, if you want to, you can even motion to the free market for that. Once we reach a level where there's not a whole lot of jobs available, well, people won't come here and they'll go somewhere else if you want to go all free market with it. Um, but there's also another thing that I wanted to touch on here, which is that uh, I, I pointed out in the beginning that there's never any very good economic arguments. The math just doesn't add up that um, that people will use that as sort of a smokescreen. And I want to point out that Sprouticus brought up two really interesting little uh, little tidbits. One, he made this extremely vague reference to, well, you know what happened to Great Britain after they let all those immigrants in, which was is just so silly, like literally just, yeah, I heard a bad thing. You might as well be talking about no-go zones are you gonna you're gonna start breaking out that stuff um and then uh, or other whatever other uh pipe dream fantasy that 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 uh, identity europa spins up but also the great irony is that in your opening statement you brought up ms-13 oh these murderers these brown murderers are coming into our country Ooh, ms-13 motherfucker was founded in la we exported it to Mexico. What the fuck are you talking about? This is what I. This is why I get so motherfucking frustrated. I get so frustrated because there's such a level of dishonesty. Just say you don't like people from from somewhere else and just own up to it. And also admit that you're willing to fund a hyper surveillance, hyper militarized internal police force that cracks down and counteracts the the what you actually wish to accomplish. The thing is, people. We already know. We already have data that shows that if you incentivize immigrants to show up to their meetings and they're not at threat of constantly getting dis deported they will show up turns out they want to be here and if we give them reasonable things that don't involve getting their heads cracked open with a baton actually they'll work with us wow it's almost like treating humans like humans and actually understanding where it's coming from would make sense and guess what if there's a, still a huge issue with massive immigration from other places you want to know what would still be cheaper than maintaining a standing army designed to crack down on immigrants helping those nations they're fleeing those nations for a reason if we invested in humanitarian aid or something along those lines to those nations wow we might actually be able to uh, solve the problems that would make them that they're making them come here in the first place it's just this is such a backwards thinking and all of it is done in the name of hiding the fact that you just don't like mexicans what okay the? okay wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, no, no. no no wait wait so we're gonna go in order here because i know this is anger what Sproticus, what should we do should we enact chaos i thought I you were know, an order republic I, I was i was called a racist i thought i was yes, able to you, to you, you, everybody's gonna be able to respond but there's a lot of people Maybe. waiting and i said turk would be next it's gonna I, I be Turk. Like then it's, like I deserve a smoke for that one, message. don't I? Okay, so it's gonna be don't Connor, I. Turk, then Sprouticus. And of course, each person is probably gonna have it back and forth with Demon Mama. So just be ready for that. I gotta use the bathroom. Connor, you're first. Be right back. All right. I'll, uh, I'll be, I'll be super polite because Demon Mama and I have worked on our relationship really hard, and I just want to ma maintain that. Okay. So my frustration with this is I don't give a fuck about the melanin in somebody's fucking skin, as I mentioned previously. Uh, you know, there, there's some... Uh, inside, every Vietnamese person is an American. I think that's true. We are a civic nationalist country. 
I don't give a fuck if you're a black American or a Hispanic American or an Asian American or a gay American or a trans American. You're fucking American. All right. So we're, we're there so far. Well, for the, real um, quick, real quick. Oh, my problem oftentimes, the, the very first time you triggered me was when we were talking about terrorism and I think no go zones and uh, crime is another thing in which you, you trigger me. And it's, it's because like the reason why we don't have a whole bunch of really nefarious shit happening here all the time is because we have a really aggressive security structure, law enforcement, Wrong. Yes, yes. Well, oh, Federalized oh, real law quick. enforcement. We have. I'm not done. No, 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 I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Hold on, hold on. We're like 15 wait, minutes wait, at a time. Wait, Connor. I'm not, I'm, wait, I'm not interrupting you. I'm not interrupting you to say something bad. I meant to do this before, but I accidentally pressed the wrong button. Let me just hear me out. I agree with you. I don't think that. I, I believe you when you say that you don't care about the, the color of people's skins, but you make very different arguments than the arguments that I've heard here. And I think that. I sure. don't think that we should. Uh, that we should derail onto discussions of no-go zones because that is a completely and utter different discussion about the actual re reality of such uh, conspiracy theories, and they are conspiracy theories. And, and, and I, I have an olive branch right here uh, be, because if instead of getting hung up on descriptive issues where we probably don't agree or we could get into heated contentions and go off into weird tangents and shit, you said something incredibly important that I think we can agree on, uh, which is basically love. Like, kicking people out of this country is not a holistic solution. Oftentimes, these people are fleeing their countries of origin for a reason, and sometimes that reason is us. Sometimes we're a destabilizing force. Sometimes we pay the CIA to fuck up their country. Sometimes we're fucking up their oil shit. Sometimes we're fucking up their economies. Um, you know, sometimes we even invade them. If you look at the Middle East and North Africa destabilization of the past 20 years, that was a part of the global war on terror. So I think that as a part of a holistic solution, and I'll leave it here, Part of a holistic solution that we agree on that way we don't scream at each other um is basically like some of these countries rather than just saying hey all of iraq we fucked up your country move to the united states all of afghanistan move to america we fucked up your country all of mexico we kind of fucked you over a little bit come on up um we need to also help stabilize these societies so we don't have insane amounts of people coming to this country all at one time and uh, that's just about as charitable as I can be without being triggered. So I'll leave it there. Love you, Turk. Thank you kindly. Yeah, you're okay. fine. I, I just want to say how immersely, or I'm just so offended at, by Demon Mama. She called I know you are. migrants illegal. Immigrants. Oh, here we how go. Another substanceless like, statement. Here we go. Are you being real right now? Is this real? Being... I thought we were here yeah. to have like a serious conversation about the subject. Can we just Can we just Can we just Let's. Okay. Okay. Stop for a second Fine. and let Turk talk. He's not he's not an interrupter. He he is very orderly. Let's listen to him. So so I really like where Hans's head's at about the whole let him in, get him legal, get him paying taxes. And you said a livable wage, which I believe would be like twenty five dollars an hour, right? Uh, uh, no, like I was just talking about make sure that they have the same work protection, same wage protections as like other American workers. We can talk about raising wages for American workers, which I'm totally in favor of, like in terms of raising the minimum wage. But like, yeah, they would be they would get the same benefits and worker protections that like regular yeah, workers. Yeah, true, Red Flanagan. Okay, so I'll I'll assume that means for a minimum wage. That's Notice how I deflated wages. him with well, that. I hope so. Called his bluff. Your logic there, if you go and look at the effective tax rates, people making fifty thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars have an effective tax rate of eight percent. And that's working full time at whatever job they're getting at 25 an hour. So they're likely getting a negative income tax or negative effective tax. So we're actually giving them more money to come here and be legalized and all that stuff. So it's like, I do appreciate that you're trying to come up with a solution to uh, fund this. I'm sorry, can you restate this idea? I, I'm having a hard time following. What, what, what are you not following? So so the idea is if we if if we give them worker protections and increase their the rate of pay that I'm sorry I, I missed the conclusion of that because you interrupted and I was completing it. <laughs> so if we if we legalize them and they get paid an hourly wage of twenty five an hour, <laughs> crying and if you constantly. calculate that for a full time worker, you get right at around fifty thousand dollars. Of course, no. Connor good. had to turn off his camera of for a second. Of course, they're probably not going to be full time, but we'll say it's that. At, at fifty thousand dollars a year, your effective tax rate is eight percent. And if you're going lower than that, you're starting to get into negative effective tax, which means we're giving you more money. So if you're trying to fund this uh, exercise of getting more uh, immigrants to be uh, documented and I know, gay fashion, it's so stupid. Like, it's a minor stuff, issue. That solution is not feasible from a 
pure money okay. dollars and cents. So I'm, I just want to like sorry, real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I haven't said a whole lot on this topic, but I just want to make it clear. It seems like you're making the argument that if 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 they are paid more, they'll be taxed more than the difference. What? Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah. If, if they were okay. to be taxed at the rate okay. that's a absurd. legal citizen would happen, their effective tax uh -huh. rate would be, we would uh -huh. be giving them money to be here. So it doesn't, what? Like, the, it doesn't even make the, sense. The, uh, the other question, okay, like, wait, one second. So right now they're here and they don't pay a lot of taxes and they get like dog shit wages, right? They're only paying like in sales tax and like stuff that like when they're skirting the system, right? Like, and I'm, I'm using like the skirting the system language to appeal to you conservatives. And when, if we pay them more money, they will pay less money to the government. I mean, like their corporations, money. like their profit margins might be smaller, but like Wait, they, like that, that, that person would still pay. You're telling me Wait, you're, that you're, someone who like, like the, the average immigrant, like a pay, like the average illegal immigrant, like they did uh, like a study on this, it was like 13% uh, in like their wages and taxes. You're telling me that like an illegal immigrant making like $5 a day, like is somehow like paying more in taxes right now than like what they would be paying if we gave them like a fifteen dollar or like oh, what you said like a god forbid like a twenty five hour minimum wage. I I don't know what the point is. You're uh, you're trying to say like that poor people don't pay taxes, but like oh, that's, are you saying it's, it's, it's mathematically saying, incoherent. Like there's two things wrong with this. Let me just point out two things. First of all, when you're talking about effective tax rate, you're talking after refunds. Refunds which are collected as tax. Like you literally don't even understand the structures you're explaining here. This is why I get so frustrated around the topic of immigration because it's like the the actual math has already been settled. Like Connor points was 100% right to tell you righties that you should just stop trying to fight on the on the on the matter of 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 ma the mathematics because you're just dead wrong. You're wrong in every single way. Also, there are a ton of states that don't have state income taxes that right now are collecting money from illegal immigrants participating in the um, uh, participating in the economy and then those illegal immigrants cannot actually make claims for benefits they don't they, they have to avoid showing up on um, jet on 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 surveys they have to fear the police the police has to do the, the ice comes in and comes as a federal force and, and and terrorizes them and it costs us money it's ridiculous the math doesn't add it up sounds like you're pro legal immigration I'm sorry, what? Sounds like you're pro legal immigration. Um, who's saying You'd that? Rather than be here legally and, and not illegally. Well, yes. Um, but do you want to know how I believe that we change that? You make them legal. You make them legal by saying, wait a minute, this is completely absurd that we that we've built our rules this way. These rules were built for a world that no longer exists, and we should have rules that make sense in the modern world. But I mean, again, all of this conversation is 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 uh like it's like a it's like an edifice it's like a facade because connor points correctly pointed out the math has been settled we know that it's cheaper there's a hundred other solutions that don't involve mass deportation and surveillance i, I reject that the math has been settled the math has case. been settled i'm sorry but as far I, as we I can tell the math cause, yes it's, but you're but with all due respect like i'm sorry but wait hold on a second hold on a second with all due respect i don't think that you made a coherent argument about the math if you really want to go in on that and you want to say it's complicated that's fine because there's but hold on hold on hold on i'm not done i'm not done Math. I'm not done. There I don't is... care if you're not done. I'm not here. I know for your you're moral very, you're very. Okay? This I'm, is wait. I'm this is not moral grandstanding, you little whiner. Are you going to be this triggered between qualified scholars and professionals in the field? You, which okay? you are not. <laughs> I can't articulate a. You are not because you aren't. Not and I have. And I have. Working on it. You're trying to. Study you are literally this. doing. Okay. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I want to point out what's going on here. What you're doing right now is you open this by. I didn't say. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Apologies. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let Demon Mama here finish, then I'm going to hand it to Supreme to respond, because there's been accusations labeled at Supreme. Demon Mama finish, Supreme. Okay, I believe you opened your statement by saying, my thoughts are very scrambled on this. And then you said, I think that there is some, um, there is some uh, dis disagreement among experts. <laughs> From everything that I've seen, that is not the case. I've I've done a lot. I've been on this in this debate a million times. I've done a ton of reading on this particular topic, and there is, from, from as far as I can tell, there is no uh, meaningful statistic impact. And the statistic impact that does ex that does exist is so minor that it can be easily offset with other programs. And and. Uh, I, I think that you would have to be able to demonstrate a pretty large cost to incoming immigrants in order to make your case and then also try to claim authority on it. But what you did here is instead you got out in front of yourself. You got really I angry. I can't claim authority on um, it. And neither I believe I was you. supposed oh. to be finishing. I oh don't gosh. care Wait, what you believe. Well, I'm just well, going to make I, the point. Damn. Damn, buddy. Damn, buddy. Supreme. 
Please, I said I would give you time after she finishes. Okay, she's okay. Okay. All right. I'm glad that I'm glad that I'm glad that we have uh, you know this this fellow be able to follow the law and orders. You know, it's a shame. I'm usually the one who breaks them. But uh, okay, so. Um, yeah, uh, again, I, I just don't think that if you, if your thoughts are really super scrambled on it, maybe just, uh, maybe just keep doing your research then. If you, if you come up with something that proves, um, that there's a, there's a, a, a overwhelming cost to having immigrants come in instead of just sort of vaguely gesturing to the concept of like population logistics, which I recognize is a thing. And we know how to deal with that. We have tons of people who work on that all the time. And our current logistics are maintaining horrific inhumane camps on the border that uh that don't accomplish what they're supposed to do and also maintaining a massively expensive paramilitary uh immigration force that also doesn't do what it's supposed to do and fails at it miserably so again you're just gonna you have there's a huge gulf of information that you can't just dismiss by saying i've read some things that disagree okay congratulations i can go on amazon and find a hundred different things that would disagree with just about anything in fact i could probably go find a couple books of experts talking about how the earth is flat but you know if you're gonna make an argument for that you got to actually put it together but it's also okay for you just to admit that you don't know what you're talking about on this issue yeah, there we go. I don't know what I'm talking about on this. Bam! Issue. The best that I can do is defer to scholars yeah. and professionals that work in the field, and they all concede that nobody has a definitive answer on this. It's Wrong. still being contested to this day. I am not an listen. I'm not <laughs> an, a, a populist ideologue like you. Okay, I'm not here to dishonestly convey nice. to people that I have is answers. That which there are not answers for yet. You are literally, you are literally, you're basically making like a, like wait, the wait, equivalent wait, wait, of a God wait, of the Gap. Wait, 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 wait. I understand that the, a lot of the data that's wait, out there geez, generally okay. supports. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, my audio must be fucked tonight because it seems like nobody can hear me. Um, okay, wait, I, I don't, okay. Twitter, please don't cancel me. It might be ableist. Does somebody in here have hearing problems that I don't know about beforehand? Okay, wonderful. So if, if oh, Turks, so Wonderful. Turks, uh, you know, disability from big pow pow with the gun, right? So, but that doesn't apply to anybody I'm thinking about. So, we're going to let Supreme finish. And then we're going to move around. Supreme, please finish. I, I don't have much more to say about it other than the fact that the best that I can do, okay, as a streamer nice. on Twitch, which you are, Demon Mama, a streamer on Twitch. You're not an academic worker. True, field. true. You're not a scholar. I'm not pretending you can, to be. You can do some research to confirm your biases. I'm actually a little skeptical that you've done any research to negate your biases. Nice. Which is very good argument there. of, you know, this this particular field. Woo, but, good argument. You know, That's an um, argument, isn't it? Like, I don't know. There, there's, Holy shit. Jesus Christ, I can't hear him. Fuck. Don't worry. He's not saying anything of value. Don't worry. Never mind. Holy shit. Demon Mama, that's that's like a five minute timeout. Please do. Time me out. Okay, Supreme, please finish. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, there, there's an investment period, especially... Uh, I understand that, like, by and large, the general consensus is that, like, uh, especially through legal immigration, uh, the case is made that it has a, a general upwards trend in, in, like, the growth of an economy. But there are a lot of potential outliers uh, in a lot of places, especially when concerning like undocumented immigrants, if there are large swaths of pe people that flock to, especially like urban areas, which is where uh, you know uh, people tend to want to immigrate to, uh, it takes time to set up the logistics, and the logistics have to be set up with budgets that are allotted uh, on an annual or biannual basis uh, that that have to remain within the uh, state or city budgets. And if you've got a large group of people that pay less by and large in taxes because they don't get, uh, you know, they don't uh, uh, the the businesses that are employing them don't have to pay payroll taxes or they themselves don't pay income tax. The only tax that they end up paying is like a uh, property tax because they have to live somewhere. Uh, and also moving to this place, uh, moving to these places, uh, you know, like tends to create much higher demand, lower supply. Um, of, of like when I'm unmuted from housing this ends up affecting a lot of people that have to live in that housing that are here You know citizens that were, were born here. There are there are a lot of complications to this and, and there are a lot of potential factors that are highly contingent on region and and the specific groups of people coming from which specific countries and I understand that this opens the door for a lot of hateful arguments and you know what uh what Sprotica says is kind of true. Like, um, you know, the refugee stuff that happened in Europe. Now, I, I wouldn't make the argument that <laughs> identity the Europa that are causing the, the refugees themselves that are causing the problems. But there is a lot of friction that's caused by people's prevailing sentiments. You bring in a, 
you know, a lot of refugees. And like the people who live there, there's certainly been a, a huge swing in right extremism and like xenophobic uh, attitudes and stuff. And this creates problems as well. This is not a thing that we can really address with policy, right? And so, you know, this is a thing where I would defer to the experts. I would defer to visa officers uh, communicating with population planners and, and urban developers to try to measure and, and make sure that any friction like this is mitigated to the extent possible to promote the most growth possible. And there are challenges to this. I have a lot more to say on this issue, but I, I'm really embarrassed and, and I'm really, uh, you know, I'm honestly, I'm nauseated that we spent so much time with these like silly bickering back and forth things. It's True. Why did you do it though? Why did you gimmick. do it then, buddy? Okay. I can move it back. I can move it to like another part of this discussion if um, you'd like me to do it. It was Zand and Sprout, but Sprout did have to respond to an accusation earlier. So we're going to do Zand and Sprout, so, because I know Sprout's going to respond to Demon Mama. And by then, I think Demon Mama should have, like, fulfilled the five minutes. So, Zand Xander Hall. All right, so as far as I know, nobody in here is an academic, somebody who collects and synthesizes data. We have to go off of what uh, the overwhelming consensus of uh, professionals in these fields are to come to the correct conclusions. And it seems like, from all the research I've done, all the research Demon Mama has done, that uh, immigration results in a net benefit in general and i want to move the discussion on i'll let spraticus respond after this but i want to try to move us on to another part of yeah, this I'm topic don't worry um, though. the realization is I, I don't know why nobody's brought this up we're never going to stop illegal immigration a wall isn't going to stop it uh cracking down harder isn't ever going to stop it what we can do though is cut down on the harms caused by illegal immigration one of the largest cases of this are when like um i believe it was uh connor point said earlier when crimes are committed in some of these communities, they don't get reported because people are afraid of being, de of being deported, you know? So I think a huge part of this is so long as illegal immigration is illegal, <coughs> it's going to keep happening and we're never going to stop it. If we want to stop illegal immigration from happening, make it legal, make it so these people aren't afraid to you go know, to the police, know, to, uh, to snitch on uh, crime uh, cartels like MS-13, other organized crime groups, and give these people what they need in order to help be part of society. They pay taxes in some forms now. Uh, we've obviously, I, I went over this earlier, um, sales tax in states where we don't have uh, state income tax. Uh, you've got gas tax, property tax, um, I believe schools as well. I, I think, I, I'm not sure how that works, but there's a bunch of different ways that they pay taxes. They don't get benefits from it. They they help the economy. They commit less crime. And even if that's not the case, since a reporting error, we can solve that. I, I think that the, the discussion's getting way derailed into an argument as to whether or not uh, the the academics agree on on whether or not illegal immigration is good or bad. But we when know they do. It, it seems like it's already been agreed upon by most academics. Thank you so much. As so the problem Appreciate is that, that just simply attributing this to immigrants or whatever is is kind of a, a fallacious framing. I think based you know what? based on my Dude, cursory knows, understanding no of the topic. You know what I mean? Like that this is this is one of the major contentions that's being had in the academic sphere. Simply saying immigration and, and uh, talking about it in such general terms kind of does a disservice to uh, the complex nature of a, a very broad topic oh, with yeah. a lot of, you know, oh, it's so complex. Uh, that's why we track. And why are you here? So generally, when I talk about the harms being caused by immigration, and why are you uh, here? when I use the term immigration, Such I'm talking weasel. about all sorts of or illegal immigration, all sorts of illegal entry into the country. We can use MS-13 as an example. Um, MS-13 is very powerful. Similar criminal gangs like this are very powerful. They have their ways of getting into the country. Human trafficking happens. There's no way to really prevent it in the way that conservatives usually advocate for, at least not to an effective degree. MS-13 has submarines. They have uh, people they bribe or threatened to get into the country they they have their Based ways out of, of, LA. of exporting drugs and and people here uh for human trafficking if you want to make these or if you want to shut these organizations down making it so that people who want to snitch aren't going to get deported and they aren't afraid of that is a very good way to to handle that to be clear i think deportation is just off the table it would be silly i mean our agriculture industry would just buckle like I think 50 to 75 percent of our like of our farming industry uh, employees is employed by you know is, I want to respond is, is to comprised so of like uh, Mexicans specifically undocumented Mexican immigrants, and like yeah. the thing is uh, like farmers when they try to hire citizens when they try to hire like American you know native born they don't stick around, like we rely on on this uh, this strange institution of people like having to flee their countries and choosing. 
uh, work that most people don't want to choose. Most people don't want to be graders or, or, you know, most people don't want to harvest crops. It's not fulfilling work. There's not really a lot of headroom. Uh, it's like this weird limbo. And this is the sort of thing that's complex and, and Supreme difficult. Supreme is really a pseudo intellectual. Solid conclusions to this. How cool would it be? How cool would it be if those workers, uh, instead of being paid under the table and uh, non-taxable income due to their status, were able to uh, pay taxes, income tax, like everybody else does? <laughs> uh, wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would. But then farmers would also be less incentivized to hire them, and and it would create more job. You know, it would create more demand for for people that are not undocumented immigrants to work there. And Wait, then motherfucker, why is that? I, it, it's rough. Imagine like, paying for literally no Wait, argument. Wait, this is so. Like the Supreme just said. Can I just okay? But like ten oh, seconds. This is so funny. We gotta like we gotta look at wrapping this up, or we're not gonna have enough time for the last topic. And I yes, just want to make sure Sprout got a time to respond to the thing earlier. Here we uh, go. Supreme, Here all I would say is that even if like you raise the wages of them to like uh, like to be competitive with like domestic workers, I'd say that's a net benefit in terms of like the workers that actually get work. They have like adequate wages and worker protections. I think Zan is totally good at debate. I'm making that trade off. I think Zan's very good at debate. I'm sorry. Can you one more time? Uh, so, so what I uh, said was, uh, you made a statement about like how like if you raise the wages of, of like the uh, immigrant workers, then like they're uh they're, they're they're like there's less incentive to hire them like there's more like a like potential for like to hire domestic workers um i don't particularly care whether they're hiring domestic or foreign workers in this i just want to make sure that the workers who are working who are like earning a wage are protected by labor protections and i'm okay making that trade-off if it means like they if they start self-selecting for more like domestic workers for like whatever reason that's sure, to sure. that's totally fine with me yeah. and then look uh yeah so that's that's noble but there's also like an elephant in the room which is that uh, part of the incentive for undocumented workers to work in agriculture is because we sort of look the other way. INS looks the other way uh, to allow them to perform that labor because our agriculture industry relies on this. You know, I understand, but like I'm not comfortable like with a permanent underclass. I want to try and fix that someplace. If that means food's more expensive. That means like we have we Me need too. more. Like Me, I'm with you. Yeah. Base, hell yeah, man. Let's go. Base, yeah. in, base in policy field. Okay, real, real We're quick. I'm gonna throw it okay. over okay. to. I had to just. I just okay, wanted to say something to Supreme. You just but... said real. It's all good. Well, I. Okay, say something to Supreme, but we got to sure. go to uh, so they can respond to you. Um, it's just. I just okay, wanted to Dimo, point. By the way, the echo is from you. It is. How is that? I don't know how that's uh, possible. One hundred percent. I've been like trying to figure it out for like thirty minutes, and all all signs point to Demon Mama. That's very weird. I'll, I'll see LA what I can do to fix it. I'll, I'll see what I can do to fix see, it. Yeah, for, there it is. Okay, that's very okay. strange. I apologize about that. Um, I'll try and solve it. Um, <clears throat> um, but what I was going to say is um, earlier on in this conversation, there's there's just, I don't know, I feel like Supreme is just showing that, like, like he's out of his depth on this thing. Because earlier, one of the main points that Supreme brought up about, um, about immigration being a problem was that supposedly immigrants largely flow to, like, urban areas. But you're also at the same time talking about how most immigrants work as farm labor or, or slaughterhouse labor, which is not in urban areas. So you just don't know what you're talking about. And I feel like you should just own that and, Listen, and admit it. These are these are silly dunks and I can refute That's them That's not a dunk. Easily. That's First pointing off, out a flaw I mean, in your I own never argument. I made the argument that immigration was a problem. I never once like took that stance, okay? That's not my position at all, that immigration is a problem. And you're doing the thing that I mentioned earlier, which is conflating immigration with undocumented immigration. And guess what? what? Like to, to, to comprise the majority of agricultural labor, all you need is like, I don't know, 2% the population of LA. It's it's a small population in comparison to the people that move to like big cities. Mm. City populations are large. Flyover states populations are very very small. They're not very population dense. Both of these things can be true. Okay. Nice. Questions? No, not really. Okay. Now, um, Sprouticus, you wanted to respond to Demon Mama. Nonsense. Then we're going to end these statements. Yes, so I'd like the entire panel to hop in my DeLorean, okay? Um, I'm, I'm going to start it up. We're going to get to 88 miles an hour, and we're going to go all the way back in time to when I was called a racist by Dean and Mama, okay? So we're hopping in DeLorean. I got to 88, and we're back. Okay, so the, it, the complete asinine statement that I'm a racist and I don't like Mexicans because I was talking about MS-13. MS-13 is majorly ran out of Mexico right now. So... It, it, irregardless of where it was founded, it could have been founded in, uh, in, it could have been founded in China or Australia or Great Britain. I don't give a shit where it was founded. Okay, I don't care about the color of their skin. 
What I care about is they're coming, murdering, raping, stealing, right? That these are things that MS-13 does. Oh, yeah. Are you seriously? Oh, you are so fucking bad faith. It's not even a... Jeez. You're going to sit there and go like... You're going to sit, sit there and go like this, like you're scared of murder and rape. You, that is asinine. It's completely bad faith, um, which is how you've been the entire panel. You've been extremely bad faith the entire panel. Calling, Excellent. Do you have calling an argument? Calling me a racist. The only thing, the only thing that you have. Do you have an argument? Sitting here calling me a racist. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm responding back to what was yeah, said. Yeah, okay. You don't have an argument. You have an argument. So, I'm responding back to what is supreme. Seriously, I'm responding back to being called a racist. Can you drop it, please? Are you Thank you. About me? I that don't know who's saying you have an argument. It, it, it wasn't him. It, it wasn't supreme. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know who it was. It looked like it was Supreme. I apologize. I love Gina this so Mama. much. I'm having so much fun. Oh, fuck. Okay, anyways. <laughs> the only thing you're calling me a racist is because you ran out of good points. Um, that's what that that's what the left does when they when they run out of points against you when they run out of things they can say they turn to the race car they turn to name calling this happens again and again and again and you see it from the left they turn to name calling when they can't ha come up with anything else smart this, to say that would that would go against what you're saying so I, I I find it extremely offensive one that you call me a racist and two it took me this long to be able to respond Thank to you, it shall we uh, do you want me to respond to that because um uh, it. it it's, I can I can add something to that. So uh, let me just clarify. First of all, uh, I didn't technically call you a racist, though I think it probably fits with your rhetoric about the wall. But you, you know, said he hates Mexicans. I, I said you don't like Mexicans. Me and it really does seem it really does seem like you don't like Mexicans. But the other thing all is, right. um, well, I, he's friends I, with me and Mexicans. So sure, that's great. Um, yeah, I, sure. Okay, um, that's very nice. Um, but uh, that's very nice for you to be friends. I'm glad you're friends. Um, but uh, what 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 I just wanted to make a small correction, which is that. Um, uh, unlike you, I didn't run out of arguments. I had a ton of arguments, and then I also pointed out that you're probably a racist and that your argument is very, very racist. Fixating on gangs and rapists coming in over the border is is pretty quintessentially the racist rhetoric we've heard for the last four years, and all of us know it. Like, you can't trick people Dylan? anymore. Like, we know. So, we know so what you're talking you about. This? So, yeah, in addition wait, to that... Wait, well, hold on. I'm not wait, done yet. Wait, stop. Stop. wait, wait. What? Allow what? Allow what? Someone to call me a racist, because if someone's going to sit here and call me a racist all night, I'm gone. Um, it just like if just like if someone's just like if someone's gonna I'm misgender sorry. somebody I'm else, so you're, you wouldn't allow it. Wait, 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 oh, do you want to mis do you want to misgender me? Misgender me. Do it. Pause, wait, no, pause it. Pause this. I do not think that an accusation of racism, sexism, bigotry, classism, because of somebody's political opinions, is the same as misgendering somebody based upon uh, immutable characteristics. For example, if I said hey sprout you're stupid it'd be a lot different than hey sprout if you had some let's say you you were had a mental disability and i called you the r slur right that is completely different than that now stupid the thing is, is a... now, the thing is sprouticus right now for you as a right winger having the crazy left to just go racist you're racist that's good optics man why you can just be there and look look see immediately when you care about dealing with gang violence immediately when you care about immigration they call you racist you can just play off that i am not except i didn't do that like like save you i don't no, like what I'm, do you want I'm, me to I'm do just, I'm, I'm, a I'm asking you what you allow because it, it seems well to be if you want to call her a racist you can call her a racist uh, i was just i was just and asking I, what you'd allow so like you can call I her a racist if you want to you're allowed to call her a racist do you want to call me a teasler do you want to call me a teasler too i'd like to ask a question I, I never so called us. Uh, no, no, I never no, called. No, no. We're not asking sorry. questions because we're wrapping okay. this topic up, and I okay, think sorry. I think the well's been poisoned enough that there's not much more we can do here. So, <laughs> we're gonna do closing statements, but they're gonna be super short, like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what the difference is uh, between you know Sprout pointing out that, the, that that gangs do this, this, and this, and then whenever like we propose like, hey, like a wall could be a part of a solution that like, oh well, uh, you know, get, you know that gangs are like running, uh, you know, smuggling people over, and that like gangs have so much control over this. It doesn't. It's like, it it's okay to use that mama of the poison argument, well, but not in the in the reverse. So I find that kind of strange. What? Um, again, like I just like to to These focus people on the dunk. fact that like, I, well, Supreme is 
happened to be more center on this than than even I thought. So I thought that was pretty based. Um, I like the idea of of acknowledging that both side that both sides really haven't come to a conclusion. There isn't really like a clear defined. As much as everybody wants to say like, oh well, the science is settled on this. It's really not, and that's why this is still such a hot debate. Um, everyone I think would love to have more legal immigration. We want people to be here that want to be here because we have people in this country who don't want to be here, who think that the, you, you, that believe that this country is failed and gone and like it's past the point of no return. There's people, and even if That's they don't my believe that, name. there's people that don't want to participate in society. They don't, they don't want to pay their taxes. They, they Even though they are a legal citizen here, they still operate under the under the table. Mama they don't pay bad. taxes, et cetera, et cetera. Mama so bad. Want legal immigrants to be here. We want them to have a, a pathway to citizenship. So if anything, we, could, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Right. We can focus on getting people out of the country who don't deserve to be here, those who have criminal backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera, while focusing on maybe finding a pathway to citizenship for those who have families here, who we know for sure have an incentive to work and provide and pay taxes and be a part of the system. So that's that's really my position on that. Pro legal immigration. Thumbs down for that illegal was the immigration. Longest thirty seconds I've ever. Yeah, sorry. In my life. So we're gonna go thirty <laughs> seconds going forward. I'm gonna have to count now. So we're gonna you send lost. it to. We're gonna send it to Connor. Oh God, you know I'm not gonna be thirty seconds. Yeah, you are. All right. <sighs> logistics. Uh, logi All right. Well, then I'll just make one point then. Um, logistics is incredibly complicated. I worked in logistics in the military. The United States military is one of the best logistical organizations on the planet. I was almost killed because of logistical considerations. Literally, we didn't have water when we needed it. Um, and I was in an environment in which I needed it. So, no, this, these things are not solved, and even the best people in the world can fuck it up really bad. Okay. I have, like, five other points, but I'm out of time. So, love ya. Okay. So now we're going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Hell yeah. Um, well, I, I think I laid out my case pretty well. Um, you know, I was uh, able to bring a lot of uh, pretty much um, uncontested points. And um, then I also added the fact that, yeah, it does sound like that. The rhetoric that you use does sound like you just don't like Mexican people and that you want to stigmatize them as rapists and murderers, just like Trump did. The same shit we've seen. So I don't know. Uh, judge for yourselves. If you all think that my arguments don't stand up on their own, I'd love to hear an argument against it instead of just whining. Okay. Next is going to be Hans. Let it be known, I have not called Sprout racist throughout this entire night, which ipso facto means I have made nothing but good points. True! I, because I True. Have, will never call him a racist tonight means I will never stop <clears throat> making good points, and no one can stop me! Ah! Sorry. I'm going to go cook some more. I need to go heat up some chicken and rice. I'm getting really hungry. I, I only ate like a pound of it when I got home from the gym. You're all very right welcome back. for this pa panel tonight, by the way. Okay. You're all very welcome for this. Statement. Um, I we're going to now throw it over to... I'm going to let Sprouticus go last, <laughs> since somebody might make a comment towards him again. Um, I'll throw it over to Supreme. Uh, I just really want to say that I'm fucking ecstatic that this, that this topic never turned into a dumbass culture war debate. That's all. Because I think we can all agree that, uh, you know... Uh, diversity and culture as it exists in America is a, is a blessing. It's You're all like, welcome. Honestly, one of the things I love And there's more. This it's not even over yet. Wonderful. Next, we're going to go And then we got Kurt. content after. Yeah, so I, th I thought Hans and I were having a good discussion about the topic because we both agree that we need to uh, increase our, our uh, how we're handling the situation from an executive branch. I had disagreements with how he's going to fund it, but unfortunately, Demon Mama went on one of her tirades, and we were not able to go ahead and continue the conversation, which is kind of like why we're actually here. Still so not an I'm argument. That, uh, we Still no that argument. Talk, and, uh, yeah. Okay. Next is Xander Hall. Yeah, I feel like I got to make all of my points. Uh, there were some points where I wanted to talk a little bit more in there, but I got to got say a bingo? what I needed to say towards the end, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, overall, yeah, I think this is an argument that unfortunately stems from a disagreement about basic facts and statistics. Um, we can look at the studies and we can look at the data as, it, as it's out now and see pretty obviously what the solution is to these problems. And I think I did yes, a good job can. of wording all of that. Did, Zan. I'm happy. Zan chose the high road and I chose okay. the low. And lastly, Sprouticus. So I, I think I, I think I made my 
thoughts pretty clear in the first half of this debate. Um, so is that illegal immigrants should not be here. Uh, they should be forced to go through the legal system in which everyone else has to go through. They shouldn't be able to cut in line. Um, this is just line cutting. Oh, ground. I hate cutting um, in line. So they, they should have to go back to their country oh. and then try oh. to get back in the United States legally if that's what they want to do. Um, you don't get to cut in line just because you think you're more important than everybody else. Okay. So the last two topics we have uh, is Insurrection Commission and uh, the ocean is on fire. What is the one that you all prefer with these being the last two? Fire. 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 Hell portal. Fire. Hell portal. Fire. It's getting hot in here and I've okay. already taken off my clothes. Here we go. Let's, Let's go. The hell portal. Okay. Recently, the ocean caught on fire. I mean that quite literally. A portal to hell opened up. Uh, due to a uh, infrastructure failure in the ocean where um, oil and natural gas started leaking out, caught flame, and it's made a lot of people discuss a lot of topics. The first off, uh, regulations on said companies that had control over this, uh, and of course, the topic of climate change was right around the corner as well. And so, I guess the question to everybody is, what does this literal um, portal to hell make you all think on these two topics? And of course, uh, you can use this as a connecting point to the general conversation. Whoever wants to go first, raise your hand. I'll throw it to you. Demon Mama. Sure. I just want to apologize in advance. The hell portal was an accident. I left open the back door. It's a lot of fire got out. Really sorry about that. Uh, we'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Very sorry. Um, no, but on a serious note, um, it's, uh, you know, this is, I, I, I find this topic interesting. Um, not so much because like this like the ocean a lot of people said like the oceans are on fire well i mean this specific incident wasn't like caused by global warming but it has become symbolic of the way that we engage with our environment our willingness to engage in massive industrial products that can have severe severe negative effects and that we don't really have a good answer for how to deal with these. A lot of these massive ecological disasters never get fully solved. There are still horrible, horrible uh, repercussions from uh, previous oil spills that have just never been fixed because, well, I mean, it gets lost after there, right? It gets lost into legislation, into um, into lobbying uh, by corporations who have literally suppressed science on this. So I find it interesting. While I don't think that this, the, this particular fire really says a whole lot about, um, about climate change itself, it does point out the, a sort of a, a very good symbol of how we got here, of sort of rampant expansion, rampant um, exploitation of the environment with very little care for what the fallout might be. And keep in mind that f spills and fires like this uh, uh, come back to face to damage the populace that lives nearby. It's a very serious issue that we don't take seriously enough. And that's what I'm interested in to getting into here. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm gonna throw it over to Connor. Now we're going, we're just going in straight lines now. Connor. Am, am I allowed to address my outro from the last one or should I just move on? This is the last opportunity you have to do it. Oh, God damn it! I just deleted it. Fuck. All right. So illegal immigration um, is always going to happen. Um, that, that's like the same thing with like the, the drug war or murder. Um, just because something is going to happen doesn't mean you can't disincentivize it. So I really don't like that as an argument. Um, uh, ideological protection. Mm. As I mentioned earlier, I care about civic <clears throat> nationalism. I want that to continue in the country. That's kind of my bar for how many people I'm going to let into the country. Civic nationalism uh, liberal is just democracy nice is not genetic. I would like it if people who came here actually believed in the systems of government that we advocate for. Um, I am a civic nationalist meaning that I think there's certain ideological um, foundations that have to be uh, believed in. And uh, a thought, I know it's the previous topic, but a thought experiment that I would like everybody to engage in is if we had 100 million grapers uh, who were all under threat of being killed uh, and, they, you know, and they needed to come here immediately, would we let them in without any caveats? Would we let them in without any ideological uh, buy-in? Would we let them in without any criminal um, you know, criminal screening, I very much doubt it. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Ocean on fire. Um, basically, one of the things that I'm going to get into in the general is that uh, this was a nationalized company. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to point out to the lefties that nationalization does not solve all of the world's problems. Yeah, Turns out that, that socialists sometimes do fucked up shit. I know that's weird to think about because, like, all we have to do is, like, move to socialism and kill our landlords and, like, all of the world's problems are going to disappear. Um, but that's probably not true. Um, and then I would like to point out 
that 99% of the ocean was not on fire that day, okay? It was like, it was like 500 square feet max. So I would like to applaud the oil companies of the world for successfully not setting 99 point, like 99997% uh, percent of the world's oceans uh, not on fire that day. So uh, thank you, and I look forward to the general. Okay, next is American Nacho. Uh, first of all, damn you, Connor, for stealing my point. Okay, I was going to say the same thing. This was a state-owned oil company, uh, and it I, I question whether or not they would have gotten away with as much as they got away with if they weren't. So they're still in operation, and they still probably will remain to be in like operation. Like BP? They have, like, a tally of, like, upwards of, like, or on the way to, like, 300 deaths now. Um, but to kind of uh, pivot to, like, a, on the same point, though, though uh, this is a problem uh, with, with oil, um, with the environment, as far as you know um focusing so much on like the oil industry and um i would just hope that we we could stop being so afraid of like nuclear energy and realize that the environmental situation that we're in will be leading i mean if we were to focus mo so much more on like uh nuclear energy i mean we're gonna have fresh water so shortages in, in the future okay so something like a new nuclear power plant uh cooled by seawater could Flanagan. yield Thanks a lot more by. than a coal plant okay <clears throat> Um, without doing the same damage and with providing clean energy, okay? And and we it, investing in this energy will will inevitably lead to like further advancements in um, improve, improvements in in the field as far as like uh, even more recent developments like breakthroughs in fusion technology and more efficient fusion, fission reactors and uh, efficiently uh, disposing of waste materials. Um, one of the more recent ones was like. Uh, I think a company started making batteries out of nuclear waste. So I think that would be the direction that I would like to take that in. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, next we're going to go over to Hans. Thank you. Sorry for running back and forth. I left it in the microwave, then I came back to listen to everybody, and then I ran back because I, I'm white and it's spicy, so I get milk. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> Mexican government fucked up. We all can agree with that. It's a government failure. I don't particularly care. Uh, I think both private and public companies can fuck up. Uh, I don't think that's like an issue in terms of the climate crisis. Uh, Amlo said he wanted energy independence. I think that's a bad nationalist way of looking at things. I want to have it like you know international uh, energy dependence so that one people can help each other. We can make uh, like energy as like efficiently as possible to make sure like that no people don't have to constantly worry about fighting each other, like defending their own resources and like in that regard. So. The private market isn't really going to save us on this. We need public, like we need public investment. Uh, we need public infrastructure. Uh, we got the meme about seventy percent of pollution is like created by corporations. But I did some digging. The study I linked in chat for everybody is about twenty percent of pollution is directly tied to consumption, and then furthermore, between forty and sixty percent of uh, pollution is indirectly tied to consumption. Whether it's like stuff you eat, the transportation of stuff you eat, the transportation of like the clothes you wear, or like that sort of shit. So, what does this mean for us? It means that the infrastructure of like how we consume things and how we produce things is the only thing that really matters in regards to fixing this. Um, I personally would prefer like if you have the time and resources to like you know eat cleaner in terms of like a. I'm completely being a hipper because I'm just like devouring this chicken right now, uh, but. We should like if you can't have resources to like do good things in terms of like your environmental impact try and do that but the overarching goal is to make sure that we have public investment to change the infrastructure of our country of our planet so that we can actually continue consuming continuing our lifestyles at our current standard of living i don't want standards of living to go down which means we have to change the infrastructure so that the production and consumption doesn't keep killing our planet so i don't Shit. think the private market is up to the task of this a lot of this technology is going to take uh, you know, numerous amounts of money in people, and it's going to cause be failures. It's not going to be market viable immediately. So, end state. I want an entrepreneurial government uh, in the United States. I want entrepreneurial governments across the world investing in infrastructure that the private market cannot currently do, so that hopefully we can dramatically reshape and change our infrastructure to meet our needs without lowering the living standards of every person uh, who currently enjoys a first world standard of living. Uh, sorry for uh, monologuing so much, and. Uh, Thank you for the conservatives. Uh, please no one say that climate change isn't real because like we have a really cool conversation we can talk about in terms of structure and stuff. And it'd be really fucking stupid if we had to like m like mold about like whether climate change is real or not. Please don't make me do that like conversation tonight. <clears throat> the climate is flat. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Next we're gonna throw it over to Sproticus. Damn it, counterpoints and nacho. Like, I don't know if you guys, like, grabbed my notebook before and just, like, stole my points for this topic. But, yes, this was a state-ran um, company. 
Um, which only proves, it's one of many examples, that when the state comes in and takes over a private industry, this is so they stupid. fuck it up. They do. So hard. So hard. Counterpoints knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, sitting there laughing. You know exactly what I'm referring to. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% with Nacho on this. We need to move to nuclear energy. Um, it, it's the cleanest, most efficient energy we have that's available to us. Um, even in the accidents that have happened in nuclear energy, um, there's been little to there's been little to no casualties uh, due to those accidents. Um, so, or at least recent accidents. Uh, so we've improved our technology a lot. I think that that's going to be our best best move going forward uh, to get to get out of oil. Um, oil is dirty anyway, so let's get out of oil. Let's go to nuclear. Um, it is definitely one of those things that we just have to that we, that we just have to uh we, we have to make that change um and there's been a there's been a fear-mongering campaign among the media among uh, among other people that nuclear is dangerous um it, it's, it's not as dangerous as they make it out to be um it can be done correctly it can be done um very safely uh with very very little waste uh so nuclear energy is definitely the way we need to move forward okay next we're going to throw it over to supreme Oh man, this may be my hottest take ever, but uh, listen, I'm a big fan nah, of democracy. Hotter than the portal to hell. Oh, sorry. Okay. Hotter than the portal to hell. I'm a big fan of democracy. Okay, democracy is really based. But if there's one arena I can sympathize with the idea of like an authoritarian technocracy, it's in the realm of climate change. I really just wish we Yikes. would take the U.S. military and fucking, you know, seize the U.N. and just be like, hey, listen, we just got to listen to these climate scientists and, and let them enact whatever reforms we need to fucking keep our species alive. I, I don't know. I don't see a way out other than that. I, we just can't stop consuming. We just human beings. We have a tendency to just pursue short term satisfaction and, and just completely Eco-fash. overlook the long term concerns. It's OK. Don't I, worry about I think it. we're going to die. Bad we're arguments. Gonna die. All oh, that's me. <clears throat> Okay, next we're going to throw it over to Turk. Yes, but not to complete Hans's bingo card. I want to say that... No, this is a not... Is Mexico a first world country? Or second or third? I I don't know the classifications. But Mexico is trying to become... uh, Is trying to benefit their own citizens by producing a natural resource that they can have access to in order to jumpstart their own economy and i'm really glad you know i asked the chat earlier today so like hey is there a video or something to look at so we can all be on the same page because in that video it goes and states that you know mexico's trying to improve their state of things and yeah they messed up and that's what happens but there's a lot of other countries out there china india uh argentina plenty of other developing countries that are trying to uh, increase their solidity in order to boost their economy. See you soon, so Session. Like, thanks for thanks for coming by. How are we going to tell those countries, no, you can't do that because your energy consumption is not clean? How do we pivot to this new world order of energy delivery like that? Okay. Next, we're going to throw it over to Sander Hall. Thank you. Um, I want to start by saying, actually, you're all right, Demon Mama. Uh, it actually wasn't you that caused the Hell Portal. I had way too much Taco Bell about a week ago, and I, you know, it, it was Thank a you, Azazel Bedazzle. Okay, Thank you so pipes, much. Burned through. It happens. You know how it is. Um, but I want to, you know, give a little bit of information for people who are watching that may not know uh, exactly what we're talking about, a few of the details. Uh, the pipeline that bursted, it was owned by Pemex, which is a state-run uh oil company by Mexico. Uh, it's uh, the third, it, it, it contributes about a third of Mexico's tax revenue. Um, it, it's the most indebted oil company in the world. There's been a lot of uh, accidents. I think like 236 people have died. Um, that's the long and short of it. The oil, bur- the oil burned so much, for about five awesome. hours. We still don't know what natural gas it was that leaked out. It was probably crude. Um, with that said, <clears throat> so uh, I don't think this is a discussion about socialism or uh, state companies being worse than privately owned companies. I don't know if that's where we want to go with this discussion. I think that's pretty irrelevant to the entire discussion. Uh, What I want to talk about, as we've dipped into here, I think nuclear power is a very good alternative to natural gas burning. Um, I think everyone here seems to agree with that. We can also uh, supplement this with renewable energy. I mean, I live in Palm Springs in the middle of the desert. Everybody out here has solar panels. There's an entire 
desert full of windmills out here. Um, but yeah, other than dealing with issues such as where we store nuclear waste, I think nuclear is the is is the next step, and we need to embrace that. Wonderful. Uh, the panel yes, is please, open to everybody. Yes, yes, please, fun. Uh, sure. In the room. Yes. Yeah, um, sure. So uh, first of all, windmills, real quick, uh, pollute just as much as a lot of these other things. It's a big misconception they have. Uh, the the not only the chemicals that they need to clean them, like the ones that uh, the chemicals they needed to like defrost, etc., no. uh, are a lot of oil-based chemicals that end up polluting just as much as uh, anything else. I mean, well, maybe not just as much, but they pollute just just as equally as far as like oil. I still would would <clears throat> argue that that nuclear is, is the way to go, and I think to to Turks. Leah, point, to thank you so you much said, uh, for the ten thousand bits. Countries, oh my God, thank you. Hinted at maybe they need to use. Thank you so much, Leah. Of, like energy, or I would suggest that maybe we be the champions of like clean nuclear energy in developing nations. We try to like bar broker some deals and and regulate that in other, in other oh. countries. Oh, I actually okay. did no dirty wind. Exactly. What's the thing? Whoa. Oh, okay, that was a lot of people at once. Uh, I think Count, uh, Connor said something first, or I think Connor. Yay! I get to go first. I'm going to give you guys lots of ammunition. So, um, I think the best thing, yeah, um, all these goals that I have that I'm about to outline right now could be, I'll, I'll talk very quickly, can be accomplished without socialism. So, Xander Hall, if you want to stay away from it, I'm perfectly comfortable doing it. I think it can be accomplished with a public private partnership. Um, so nukes, we can use fission energy now, but we should use fusion as, as soon as it comes online. Um, and basically, we said we need to thank you so much. It really means the world use. to me. Thank um, you. We need quick turn so gas much. turbine engines. Natural gas is about 70% less polluting than uh, coal. And uh, you basically need that for peak energy usage times when everybody gets home at 5 p.m. and they're jerking off and watching Netflix and all that kind of stuff. You need the ability to ramp up production. You just can't have flat nukes the entire time. Thank you. Um, then we can also do renewables as a supplement, basically to help out with all that kind of stuff. Also, I want to point out that filthy fucking capitalists are not totally opposed to this. Ford, the company that uh, is probably most famous for being one of the most capitalist advocates in the world, has now come out with a 500 horsepower F-150 that's all electric. The engine compartment is a front trunk. It's only uh, $40,000 a year, or $40,000, I think that's awesome. They also came out with an all electric Mustang, which I'm pretty sure is like zero to 60 in like four seconds, so it's awesome. This needs to be supplemented with something called carbon capture, basically getting the carbon that we've already emitted out into the world back into uh, basically a solid state, so it's not affecting the environment. Also, lab meat. Uh, Hans could eat as much fucking chicken as he wanted to uh, because right now they have uh, shoved needles in the growth hormones of uh, like in the shoulders of animals uh, pull that out without killing the animal hit it with like uh, sunlight and sugar and they've created genetically identical meat for both chicken and cows they're expecting to get it uh, yeah. on the market by 2022 that uh, 50% I want to say it's 50% of greenhouse gas emissions are related to agriculture um, so methane uh, from cows in particular is really bad um, also I know that the uh, honkies are very concerned about white demographic um, demographic collapse the solution is not to get more white people on the planet the solution is to give everybody condoms. Everybody needs to be reducing their overall fucking uh, child, uh, children, because children are one of the primary contributors to carbon emissions. So if we actually get a like one to 2.5 uh, global birth rate or something like that, we can significantly reduce, um, you know, basically uh, global carbon emissions with social fascism. Kind of, like, yeah, wars I know. Uh, hey, one Doe. of the things that somebody hey, said Doe. was, what is the, uh, the new world order of energy? Um, I was actually thinking about this because we wouldn't want to export uh, nuclear technology to nefarious regimes such as Iran. Um, but what we could do is we could say, hey, y'all come to the table. You abandon your nuclear weapons program. We'll literally build nuke plants in your country. Uh, it will be guarded by the United States military, but we will give you the power, but not the technology. Um, and I think that's something that we could do. And it's something that we need to do with developing nations where we say, hey, we're not just going to wag our finger at you that you're not allowed to use certain technologies. We're actually going to help you use the technologies that are going to save the planet. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. I hope all of you guys have an excellent night. Base. Do you mind if I respond to uh, something that Connor Point said? No, I'm gone now. That was my TED Talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I also let me, I, I just I just want to I just want to throw this out there um, really quickly because Connor points mentioned it. It's not a contention. I agree with everything he said there. Love lab grown meat. Oh, that sounds good. Um, but the reason why I want to avoid socialism in this topic is because I think if we're going to be discussing solutions to this problem, we need to just, we need to be talking about pragmatic solutions that we can do under capitalism because unfortunately or fortunately depending on what your opinion is uh, we're not getting socialism in any of our lifetimes so any solutions we come up with ought to be in our current system that are more achievable 
I, I don't that, think anybody. Was, I don't know. Yeah, but that that I want to make a point here because I think the reason why you heard three conservatives say it is because oftentimes the solution that lefties advocate for is nationalizing everything. No, nationalize come social on. Media, this is where I was going to disagree with you. Nationalize cell phones. Nationalize this is this, such a straw man. So that's why it's. It's That's really funny that you're on a panel with a bunch of lefties and like I consider myself a pretty extreme lefty and and like mm. I, I, I haven't advocated Look. for nationalizing anything. It's just it's very funny. I don't know. It's like this. It's this Xander, you thing. spoke this right, debate yeah, into yeah. existence. Is, is socialism done Damn left it, to left? Wait, I mean, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I okay, wait. This is this that traveled across the room so fast. I had no clue what just uh, sure interaction that just happened. Okay. It's memes. So who who was uh, I'm sorry. I, that I was I'm completely lost. Okay, so just raise your hand if you want to talk. Demon was first, so I just have to give it to Demon. Thanks. Um, so yeah, there was a there was a couple of things I want to touch on. First of all, this nationalization thing is is incredibly silly. Um, it it's it's not even it's not even like a good critique of like the tanky types who who do say like nationalize everything because. I don't know if you know this, but like Mexico isn't a socialist country. They just happen to have a national oil company. That's like it's so ridiculous. It's it's so silly. Like can, I don't know. Can, can I make a simple point? I know you, you were joking. I know you were joking really about quickly. everything, but sure, go ahead. Well, really quickly. Like, I'm if, finish. But but it's so simple. I does mean, national I does mean, nationalization solve you, all problems? You didn't even. That's, dude. You didn't even. I feel like this that's isn't. A five, that's a five-minute timeout. I'm sorry. You gotta listen to the rules, man. Okay. D Mommy, please continue. Um. Yeah. I don't know where this idea that there's first of all that there's anybody who says nationalization solves anything. I don't think anybody believes that. Like I certainly don't believe that. Uh. Interestingly, though, I wanted to point something to a uh, point out a little thing with something that Supreme said. Uh. Supreme said, oh, like that on this topic that he believes that we should go like full auth and just take over the UN. And I understand there's probably some hyperbole involved there. However, I will say, doesn't that argument kind of grant credence to groups like, I don't know, like Greenpeace and stuff who've been basically saying like, we are all going to die. I don't know. Maybe people, maybe people should like, if, if we're really getting to the point where we're going to make, start arguing about population control and, uh, and, uh, you know, eugenics in the name of like trying to save the planet so that we can keep consuming at the same rate i can't wait, help wait, but, wait. i can't help what but do feel you think eugenics is uh eugenics is when you when you uh tamper with and control the genetics of a, of a group of people via uh population control via selective breeding all who, kinds of who things who made yeah. this argument wait what Con connor points did Con wait connor points did. were you listening or no Connor, Connor points suggested having an, a national institution of selectively breeding human beings to select for traits. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. What I said is Connor, that's that, what eugenics is. Excuse eugenics me. Is. Excuse, <laughs> no, that is not what that is. That is no, what that's, eugenics wait, is. Wait, you just said that's what it is. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. Two, are, 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 are we are we are we having wait, some wait, like wait, hearing wait, wait, comprehension if issues? Wants, if the room wait, if the room wants, I can be the neutral party that goes up and does definition if anybody wants me to yeah pull up eugenics sure. okay continue i'll do that while you go I'll continue yeah um no uh, uh what connor points advocated for was imposing a worldwide uh uh population worldwide population control um methods which i believe falls well under the um purview of eugenics um it's not okay then then fine what is a better term that would work for you there so that you stop wait, whining population control wait wait wait, wait quick question okay, okay population so control. wait wait okay wait is oxford an institution that everyone here respects or should i use a different one for any other reason okay the study of how to arrange reproduction within a human population to increase the occurrence of heritable characteristics re regarded as desirable yeah yeah uh, characteristics that are desirable, which wouldn't right. be population selectively control. breeding humans. That's what that's selectively the eugenics. breeding humans is eugenics. It's, um, it's not just controlling sure. population through contraceptives. It's, it's I mean, like fair. If you don't think if you don't think okay, eugenics fine, applies right. here, that's fine. Uh, I think that is an incredibly pedantic uh, uh, way of like attempting to off this argument. But sure, if you want me to choose a different word, I, I that's just, fine. I hear the term being used incorrectly all the fucking time. Well, that's fine. You can you can hear that all the time. I'm very sorry for you. Set the record. Um, but I'm I'm glad that you've inserted such a useful uh, uh, diversion from what we were talking. You learned about. something. Can you just relax? Well, well, no, I mean I I just think that. <laughs> I can expound. I can expand on this, but I don't really think it's necessary. I'd much prefer to actually finish my point. Is that cool? 
Are you gonna? Are you good you with can that? Get, you can continue. It is your cool. turn. Thank you. Yours. Appreciate it. So yeah, um, what I hear is I hear a lot of arguments about uh, population control. I've heard an argument about uh, using uh, having sort of an author authoritarian imperialistic upsurge to take over the UN and force all other nations to follow the rules that we haven't even implemented in our own country yet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These seem like very irrational solutions to me. It seems to me like the lesser of two evils in that situation would quite literally be what stuff like PETA and and uh, and Greenpeace have advocated and I don't think that's really like I really don't know if that's what you were aiming for but if that is I mean I, I would urge people to uh, reconsider the value of uh, essentially like eco-authoritarianism because I don't think that that's going to have the, the outcomes that people want it to have I think there's a lot of things that we need to address with regard to climate change. One of those is meat consumption. Meat consumption is um, out of control in America, and it is it is backed institutionally. It's not just a matter of people choosing to eat meat. It's that um, beef is subsidized in America. It is it is popularized in America. It is supported even by the government. It is supported by massive lobbies. We have to address these problems because, as we have discussed already in this conversation, it is a well-established fact that uh, specifically beef production produces an incredible amount of, of um, carbon, uh, puts out an incredible amount of carbon into our atmosphere and damages the climate. So I, I think that this goes beyond just questions of, of n like nationalizing things or, or, or whatever. We need to really have a holistic approach to this, and that includes tackling things like meat eating that includes tackling things like why do we have why do we have so much uh why do we have such a reliance and and such a institutional backing to the perpetuation of of suburb cities of suburbs of, of car ownership of individual car ownership huge issue here in the states is that all of our cities have been designed with the goal in mind of have of every individual person or every individual family owning a car which has it has literally compounding effects on the on the environment in addition to the actual production of the car it, it increases fossil fuel consumption it increases the amount of of distance that people are driving because you need to have things like massive parking lots and it's incredibly wasteful this is something this is where i think that um sometimes i have to disagree a little bit with hans i i recognize where people are coming from when they say they don't want quality of life to go down but when people say quality of life, it's really important to understand what you mean. Does quality of life going down mean saying, hey guys, like we really need to move away from individual car ownership? There's a ton of people who would argue, what, I can't have my, my Hummer anymore? That's a, a decrease to my quality of life. I don't think that we should just base it off of quality of life. We should, we, we're going to have to to some degree, but we should be very critical in my opinion on what we categorize as like quality of life because personally i think there's a lot of people who believe they have a good quality of life right now because they own an suv and drive you know four hours in and out to work every day and they can listen to their podcasts but in an alternative system where we had you know more densely uh, organized cities where we had public uh you know public transportation um or at least mass transit of some form um i think that people would find that their quality of life changes quite a bit our lifestyle has become so strange um and and as a result, it's we become locked, not just where consumers can make better decisions or anything like that. We become locked into a never ending cycle, reinforcing the consumption. All right. Uh, I was directly at it. Can I please respond? Of course. Yes. Thank you. So, um, Steve Mama, uh, I agree with you that there are some things that I would say like value more highly when I talk about quality of life. Uh, when I say quality of life, I'm talking to make sure that people still have access to like, you know, like games and they still have access to electricity and they still have access to public transit again when i talk about in terms of say like uh like public infrastructure public investment obviously that entails also like you know amazing new public transit systems for the like the entirety of the united states because otherwise a lot of people will still need cars because we've designed our society to revolve around cars i'm not saying you have to ban cars i'm saying you have to make cars so inefficient compared to public transit and you have to tax the shit out of cars so that eventually like it's like unless you're like some rich asshole who wants to flex on everybody there's no reason for you to be driving a car because everyone will just be taking like all the awesome public transit yeah i mean i hear uh, where you're coming from but like there are, there's a problem there's certain issues with this and again i don't know if this is like intentional but things like even saying tax the hell out of cars those are things that offload onto the people who have who are forced into a position that they have to drive a car in order to keep their living going um and and people by the way right sure. now people who um people who don't have cars um have like in like which is a lot of people in america um it they it can literally be an impediment to them even being able to get work because if you just happen to live too far away from the city and there's no valid um transport in 
well, you can't own a car anyway. I think what we need to do is we need to recognize that this is a much bigger issue. This is a global and societal issue that we have to tackle as a society. And that might mean not just charging people for owning cars, but actually saying, hey, we need to right now switch over to, we're going to build up this sort of public infrastructure replacement. And then we're going to say, no, this many cars are no are not on the road or this much car production needs to go down and if it is as as uh if it is so and i would argue that if it is so pressing that we would consider things like global population control of human birth and that we would consider taking over the un in order to fix it i think that we should be more than willing to consider okay maybe we need to start banning cars maybe we need to start banning types of cars maybe we need to start severely punishing car companies and oil companies that are doing this because otherwise they're going to keep perpetuating the exact systems that people need to survive and the thing is humans are going to try to survive no matter what if it comes down between um survival or not having a car they're going to find a way to get a car and they're going to keep surviving so we have to think about that and put that in a in a larger in a larger larger perspective because it is it, it's completely rational for people to want to do what they need to do to survive I don't know if no a whole lot about economics but the your your whole idea of let's just have the government regulate how regulate how many cars we made and, and significantly decrease it um would have a drastic effect on the price of cars and what you would be doing is you would be uh, forcing uh people who are in rural areas or who are in areas where they can't get good work um to uh, pay a massive amount which they probably wouldn't be able to pay for a vehicle to go get work no this is an absolutely asinine take from you that this that this that we just have the government say that this car company can only can make so many cars i i don't think you truly understand uh supply and demand um all right, all right. that was to me that was to yeah, me i know i know i know a good amount about economics and let me help sprout here really really quick all right buddy when we talk about like helping public infrastructure when we talk about like like making it so you don't need a car I understand that rural areas do not have the money and the, the, the capacity to build their own public infrastructure networks. The only reason why we have electricity in the South or like why we had there in the first place was because during the New Deal, we built it for them because otherwise it wasn't good enough economic incentive to build electricity there themselves. We can do that again in terms of public infrastructure for rural areas. I'm not saying we should leave rural areas to rot. I'm saying if people want to live in rural areas, I guess you can do that and we will give you public transit so you don't need a car as much. But like, and for like for Demon Mama was correct about like terms of like say incentives, right? I don't want to just tax cars. That's a really lit, like shit lib kind of way of like looking at the problem. You're punishing consumers in a way that you're not publishing companies. Uh, you obviously need to do both. You need to have like detriments for people who own cars, but you also need the public incentives to like use infrastructure, to use public transit. And then what I would say about quality of life, why it's so important to me as a like market socialist and as like an avid democracy enjoyer, uh, this is largely for like uh, for Supreme, is that no, Demo uh, no democratic platform will win if you run on lowering people's standards of living. I'm really sorry. Like, I know that like, the Republican Party is semi-successfully, but if you come out and say, sorry, gang, we're all gonna have to like, you know, like suck it up a little bit. Like, you know, like no one gets cars anymore, but we're like not gonna like, it just, it's not gonna go over well. So like, I understand like from a, like a, from a technocratic perspective, if I could hit like the do it button, and I, I, I would smash that bitch like no one, no one would believe it. Uh, but I can't do it right, but we can't do that right now. And we need the rest of the world on our side for this. And so what that means is we have to win democratic elections, at least like in the Western democracies, like where dem democracy is kind of important. And that's why living standards are so important to me in terms of this argument. So what's okay. your idea? What's your idea for public transit when it comes to bumfuck Egypt, right? You don't, you're not, you're not going to have an idea when it comes to public transit for bumfuck Egypt. Um, and it, that person is going to be left with having to pay for a car because now he has no other option but to pay this absorbent amount of price for uh -huh. a car. And you're, you're forcing this person to be poor because he can't afford this car that he desperately needs. Okay, hold, hold on a second. Wait, wait, wait. This was go. Get him, buddy. Go. Go nuts. Okay, Connor. This tag it. team from okay. the top rope. Okay. Okay, Connor. All right. All right. Yeah. Yay! I get to be a fucking centrist. All right. Here's the fucking thing. We don't have to do any of this shit. All right. Thank we you. don't have to do any of this shit. Fucking. Uh, basically, carbon capture is a viable technology. They've already done it. And on top of that, you can build it into the externalities of oil producing companies and natural gas companies. You can literally say within the price of you creating natural gas for sale, you have to factor in the price of carbon uh, carbon capture. 
So you can literally get uh, natural gas and oil into a fucking flat zero fucking uh, thing by basically building in carbon capture into the price of oil and gas. Because w if anything, we know that capitalism is not good. It's capturing externalities in the unit price. That's number one. Number two, what you can do is you can do uh, commercials with me, with my fucking dad bod, driving a fucking Ford F-150 with a white monster energy drink saying, hey, you know what's fucking based? Fucking eating lab meat and fucking driving my electric truck from my fucking gerb uh, in bumfuck oh, yeah. Egypt into the city. And that that's going to be fucking based. And the reason why it's going to be fucking based is because people are not going to know that they're driving hippie, pussy no environment destroying fucking technology if you sell it to them right you can literally create electric fucking cars that look like that like do like zero to 60 and three this is what uh people don't understand and then i'll leave it here this is what you don't understand there was a hot rodder who was a silicon uh a oh silicon i'm so excited Valley for this nerd, watch this and he loved building hot rods with his dad and he wanted to build hot rods with his son and he was literally like emo depressed because he was scared that he wasn't gonna be able to build hot rods with the sun. Do you know what he did instead? He fucking took Tesla chassis and slapped them into fucking Mustangs and Camaros and shit. And now he has 1960s and 1970s style muscle cars that do zero to 60 in fucking three and a half seconds. So don't make it this like pussy bug eating fucking live in the apartment, you fucking weirdo shit. Make it badass, make it fun. Holy shit. You can do both. You can I, do badass. I completely. I completely, I agree heavily with Connor points in that one. I think that a lot of the left's messaging, particularly the left, I know there's plenty of people on the right that are also in favor of these things, um, need to make it more palatable to your average, like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to lose my gut. I'm not putting on the glasses. I only got one hand because I have to hold push to talk. But yeah, I, I think I completely agree with that. I think one of the things that's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people is the idea that we need to get rid of suburbs because they're so bad for the environment. Um, a lot of people don't want to move to cities. I love cities, but a lot of people don't. And that's going to be a hard sell for a lot of people. I don't know where how the you hell sell do that. You to live people. in Palm Springs. Yeah. So um, there's a couple of things I wanted to address. First of all, that there is a there is a little bit of an irony in using the uh, the turn of phrase "bumfuck Egypt." When last I checked, I think Egypt actually does have stronger public uh, public transit than we do. Um, but uh, yeah, just to just to sort of um, just to pull a little uh, uh, Virgin Chad meme here uh, with the the Virgin Sprouticus. What? How are we gonna? How are they gonna? They're gonna have to buy expensive cars. No, we will actually just build using government investment and community investment public transit for them to use. The funny thing is, is that rural communities right now, they're not driving into cities. They're driving into the, their rural community center where their Walmart or wherever they're working is. You can build- Are we in the same panel? Things. Yeah, I don't want to ride a bus. Yeah, I, that shit I'm sorry. sucks. I, I, there's still, there was well, still I mean, no there, damn, Bill, there you have it. Well, you're super motivated there's still to care. No solution whatsoever. So, so wait, hold on, real quick so question. Real quick question. Wait, 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 you interrupted transit. me. You interrupted yeah, yeah. me. Okay, wait, yeah. wait, okay, wait. Okay, so, okay. I don't know, it's, they're having a hard time. You too. You too I mean, should. she interrupted you... me a whole lot, so I mean, it's just really interesting that I can't interrupt. <laughs> Wait, what? I do my best to stop everyone from interrupting, but... More conservative censorship. So, I know, Dima, right? Three Sprout. <laughs> you mama? Yes, okay. Um, sorry, I was waiting for everyone to finish. Um, uh, so, yeah, um... Uh, the, the response to, hey, the planet is going to become in, in uninhabitable for the vast majority of people, and the response is, I don't want to ride a bus. I mean, that's very categorically sort of um, hyper-fragile and also, um, in, like, just, just unhinged. Like, the idea that you, would, that, you would, that you would acknowledge that, hey, the planet is, like, literally tipping on the on the edge of irre irrevocable climate change but then you don't you don't want to consider right like riding a bus that is actually yeah. a problem yeah that is actually yeah, yeah, kind is of a, a problem, big problem but, problem but, but i i also we agree by the way I, by the, I know you're interrupting again uh, my goodness well, okay so it goes on like 10 minute dialogue to expect okay. to be interrupted we've known this okay. for four decades and <laughs> we just can't, can't we stop we mm, okay captain planet's right yeah. here holy shit Man, I want to make this show weekly. Um, Dima Mama, please finish, and then we'll we'll start with Supreme, and we'll go around. Supreme, Thank you. Sprout against go around. Sure. Um, I don't entirely disagree with um, with Cotter Point's idea of making these things um, sexy. I totally agree with that. I think that I think there are groups of people. I mean, I've, I've had a huge like vegan debate 
uh, thing that I've been doing because I think the vegans do a very bad job in general representing their opinions in a way that makes sense to people who are struggling with like food insecurity or who may not know how to cook. I have I actually have like a whole proposition for how we Im encourage veganism on a sort of guerrilla level that doesn't involve any government involvement whatsoever, but rather just motivated um, uh, c c communities of, of vegans who actually care about it could actually, I believe, could genuinely change the way that we eat in America. And I could talk about that another time. However, um, I do think we need to make it sexier, but there is there are certain lines where we just have to acknowledge that like some things that we do are really bad. Suburbs are super bad. They're super, super bad for the environment. They're fucking, they fuck, they not only fuck up the way that our cities run, they make our, our, we, they make us have to sit in cars all the time. They make the people who can't afford cars have to sit on buses for hours and hours of every single day. And, um, they're really super bad to live in. Like most people who live in, in, um, in suburbs don't know their fucking neighbors. They're not connected. It's, they're really actually not good. They're not very good communities to live in. So that's an example. Another one is personal car ownership. I do think that it would be great if we could get to like 100% electric cars and we'll see if that's possible but if it's not possible can we not acknowledge that like maybe it wouldn't be so bad if we took buses that were like clean efficient comfortable if our if we actually invested in those buses that maybe riding a bus wouldn't be so bad right now riding a bus is bad is because there's there's no funding for any of these public transit public transit in america is made of, of messy routes that are that are understaffed that are old buses that suck if you put some money into it the buses get nice maybe you have i don't know free wi-fi on all the buses all kinds of cool stuff there's a million really cool things that we can do but there's this but what, what we've seen on this panel so far is i don't want to ride i don't want to ride a bus i don't want to be a, i don't want to be like that talking about wait, 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 wait. sprouticus who is who i was talking about with? because i've been trying to figure out this wait, wait. For like the past like are you feeling minutes. are you feeling You've been going on these long tirades against who Ex like excuse well, who's me saying excuse this? me my god wait wait, wait. Wait. No, 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 no no i'm gonna i'm gonna take another wait 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 we can one at a time nacho asked you a question you can respond to that question then we're going to supreme then we're going to sprouticus i'm going to connor then we're gonna probably wrap this up sure um i was super clear Okay, I was super clear about who I was talking to, which was Sprouticus whining about um, not wanting to ride a bus. Um, and uh, so, yep, uh, that was pretty clear. And then um, also, uh, it's funny because I've, I've remained very quiet and I, I have actually been taking notes to lump my points together, but that's still not good enough for all of you whiners. So again, when you have an argument, please get back to me. Otherwise, keep whining because it's very entertaining to me. It just feels okay. like eight of us are in one panel and you're in your own panel arguing with totally, some dude. straw man. I totally. Don't know, I don't know what the fuck is going on right now. Okay. Sorry. So, Sprouticus, uh, I'm sorry I was saying uh, Supreme first, but if she was talking towards you, then yeah, you respond, then Supreme, then we'll go around. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, the idea that they're just going to build public transit for uh, BFE is, is absolutely hilarious to me. They're going to have a bus go to each property. Um, because remember these people can't have cars, so they can't get to a they can't School get to buses. a center point to where they get to a bus. School buses. Um, so School they, buses. Getting, so the, these bus routes are going to go to every single property in your state, um, which is going to be a huge route. So I hope they don't have to be anywhere on time, uh, such as get to work. Um, I, I really hope that doesn't happen. Um, it, it, it's absolutely asinine, and there's there's not a good solution. The solution wasn't given. The 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 solution that was given was we're gonna build a, we're gonna build it. Okay, well, what are you going to build? They, they, they can't answer that question because it's not feasible. They know it's not feasible. That's why they can't answer that question. That, that question was asked probably 10 to 15 minutes ago, still yet to be answered. Um, so I'm really looking forward to see what this answer is to completely get rid of cars. People who live like 50, 60 miles away from their job. Um, yeah, so I, I just ride the bus. Yeah, because that is definitely feasible when that bus is going to go all the way around the state. Um, and then decide have to come back to the city. Uh, hopefully, you just sleep on the bus and live on the bus. Okay, I'm gonna. Re this. Can I respond to that, please? Never, wait, like, wait, never, wait, never wait, say. Wait. I didn't say what to build. Okay. Can I respond to that? You mama gets to respond to that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, um, I I don't know if you've ever lived. Maybe you haven't lived in rural America. I don't know. Um, but did you know that that did you know that they have school buses in rural America? Wow. Oh my God! It's yeah, almost like we already have bus routes. Right? <gasps> wow! Cities? What's do the that? School buses go all the way to the cities. Wait. Do the school wait, buses wait, wait, go all the way to the cities. School buses yeah. are, for, are, are for children who can't own cars. Like the moment yeah. I could drive when I was in high school, I stopped taking the bus. Yeah, good for you. Like that's great. America, I didn't. Where it gets so cold Damn. that it's Damn, like that's very nice like for you. I'm glad you. Bus is hey, hey, I'm very glad that you. I'm very, very glad that you were able to have that uh, enjoyable experience. That's very nice for you. 
but we're talking I thought that you were the one who didn't you just you Supreme 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 I'm, Supreme, Supreme, Supreme. I'm sorry I'm sorry it's my turn to talk now buddy first. I know you're very angry but you advocated no, no you're not gonna get to this you're no 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 hold on a second no people. I'm gonna get to this no okay, oh, I'm gonna get to this okay okay so this is what we're gonna do for the rest of this I'm gonna have a timer and everybody's response to everything is gonna be timed and so if you go over it at all I'm just gonna have to make you stop, and that's how we're gonna do everything until the end of the channel now, okay? So, Demon Mama, you've got 30 seconds. Go. Thank you. Uh, at the beginning of this argument, Supreme argued that he thinks that we're so doomed that he would be willing to invade the UN to impose American energy standards across the entire world, but he's not willing to ride a bus. That just goes to show you that this is a fundamentally unserious argument, that he doesn't actually know what he's talking about on this issue as well as the last one. And uh, with regard to Sprouticus, Sprouticus, you don't know what you're talking about either. Uh, in rural areas, if you've ever lived, in, lived or worked in a rural area, there's there are still population centers where most of the jobs are, and it's very easy to implement bus routes there. And guess what? If you need to have some sort of special example, you can build one. There could be a single bus route that carries a bunch of people out to the factory. Bam. Solved. Okay, next is going to be Supreme. Uh, I just want to make it clear that my like opening statement was a joke. I think it's probably going to be the case that we chose our own demise, uh, chose the end of organized human existence. As Back we know, pedal Andy. Out of preference. Uh, you know, I, that's, I think that's just what going to happen and there's a lot more problems than just carbon footprint depletion of water resources depletion of um i just learned this is a thing like certain types of silicon that's used for construction that we're like running out of certain types of uh like soil nutrient density is another one it seems like we're depleting like there we don't even have answers for these things like we're just hoping that we can invent technologies to address these things supreme also, more like I'm reverse saying, i, I want to make it okay 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 so i said we were doing this 30 second thing and I'm nah, I don't have any respect for these people. I, I'm sorry, did I go over time? No, Demon Mama tried to talk over you. And so we're going to stop to doing oh, talk, that Oh, talk under me. Sorry, talk under me, right? <laughs> okay. We're what does that, that, that mean? Please finish, Supreme. You're given 20 extra seconds now. I, I, I literally think my preferences on how to travel are irrelevant to this conversation, right? I was providing an example that reflects, I think, a greater trend in especially, like, middle America. He I think he's funny, but he's not. So, you know. It's very nice for you. Okay. If you sorry, gonna... real quick, I want to wrap up. If you guys want to know more about climate change stuff on on Twitch, check out twitch.tv slash touring news and uh, your environment Seattle. Those are two channels that I recommend. Those are people that actually devoted a lot of time to understanding these issues. Yeah, they actually know what they're okay. talking about. Yeah. Next is going to be Turk. I, I think I'm good. I I don't want to get interrupted by Demon Mama, so I'll pass. <laughs> Sprouticus. So I just want to make I want to make things very clear. A bus doesn't go around a whole state, right? So that that does not happen. Um, but what? It, that's that's what that's what they're wanting. What are you what they're talking about? Happen, right? They're like, well, the school buses. Okay, so this this one bus is going to go all the way out to BFE, go all the way around BFE, and go back to the city. Are you it's stupid? It's not going to happen. It's not feasible. It's a it's an imaginary dream that they're having that this eventually will happen. And that it's something that's going to be feasible for the entire state. It's not going to. Oh, it's complete and utter oh, badness. Just. Okay, um, I'm gonna throw it over to. Okay, Turk. Now you want to say something? No, I was gonna pass again so I didn't get interrupted by uh, Demon Mama again. <laughs> okay, so a good, good one. The Demon Mama. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. No, Honor. it's it, this is this is incredibly silly. The idea that um, like it, it's just literally not understanding anything about how bus routes work at all. I, I don't even know how to dis how to re react to this. First of all. There are large, basically, there are huge facilities where tons of people work. In my home state, for example, there was a massive lab, um, a massive marine biology lab. And every single day, they would have a bus that would go from a very easy to reach location. And then they would drive all of a huge amount of their employees down there. It's very simple to do. But you can have more than one bus, as it turns out. You don't need one bus to drive around the whole state. What are you talking about? Okay. Uh, next is going to be Connor. Yay! Uh, since y'all talked a lot and now we're on 30 seconds things, I'm just going to read uh, my bullet points instead of everything. So, desalinization, space mining, crop rotation, conservative space censorship, mining? I'm fragile, externalities, redesigning cities is based, different strokes for different folks, car tax yellow vest, lab meat, global population control is not eugenics, it's Xbox and condoms. 
<laughs> Thank you. Okay. Was, was so, that a poem? Yeah. It's a haiku. It's a really, very <laughs> haiku. Yeah, yeah, these yeah, people yeah. are so haiku. hilarious. Oh, okay. I so, blow so, these people gonna, out so hard. It's ridiculous. Now, and everybody's going to do ending statements and shout outs. And we're going to start in the bottom left hand corner with Supreme. Oh, are these like closing end of the panel statements? Closing end of the panel, and you also like shout yourself out. Yeah, sure. I'm Supreme. Now you guys know who I am, okay? That's it. Bad showing, buddy. Now we're going to throw it over to Turk. Yeah, so I, I love how we were supposed to be talking about like the ocean being on fire, and then it like devolved into Demon Mama interrupting people and a bunch of petty shit that no one wants to really deal with. We could have talked about real things here, but unfortunately, no. Uh, I'm Turk. I don't do politics too often, but uh, I do science and tech. If you like computers and stuff, uh, youtube.com slash the Turk. We're going to throw it over to Xander Hall. Yeah, um, my name is Xander Hall. I appreciate you having me on today, especially going out of your way to have it on Discord so I could be here and had a fun time. Um, you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Twitch. You can find me on my website. I do lefty content and... For God's sakes, I just want there to still be coral reefs by the time I'm 30, when it comes to the whole climate change topic we're discussing. I just want there to be coral reefs in, like, eight years, okay? Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. We're going to throw it over to Sproticus. Uh, the Sproticus on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, if you like my points, come give me a follow. Um, I, I, en I enjoyed this conversation for the most part, besides the rules for thee, but not for me part, by a couple people on this panel. Um, and then going on mute and saying I have no respect for any of these people. Um, that, that was absolutely amazing, um, and I look forward to the next panel. We're going to throw it over to Hans. All right, everybody. I'm sorry for the insane amount of energy that I had during the last bit. I wanted to jump in. I wasn't able to. Uh, most of what Connor said was okay. Um, I'm not sure about sharing all the condoms because I need lots of them. Uh, but, like, in general, uh, we need to improve our infrastructure. We need to help everybody. We need to change so that our production and our consumption do not I didn't say that, though, did I? And if you like these I think I said about the Republicans. wholesome and spicy memes, you can find me at Hans. I respect Zan, here Zan and Hans a lot. And on Connor. Twitter. Um, I do fun Pokemon streams you, and Magic the Gathering because despite my you massive could, yes, appearance, Redcon. I am the weebiest of the weeb and the nerdiest of the nerd. Um, thank you so much for having me, Dylan. It's been an absolute fucking blast. And I am so excited. And just for the record, I still never said Sprout was a racist, which means I've done nothing but win over and over and over. Nothing but good points. No one can stop me. And now you all know it. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> okay. I like your energy. Okay. Now we're going to send it over. Okay. Now we're going to send it over to Nacho. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm really glad to finally break the Xander Hall curse. Uh, Xander Hall is supposed to have been on a panel like three times that I've been on before, and it, this never works out. So it was nice to finally meet you, Xander Hall. Um, just you. to end on that last point, China has 17 nuclear reactors in progress in their um, up in their latest industry report um, that was released April 15th of this current year. The U.S. has six approved reactors and three proposed as of March uh, 9th, 2020. So, uh, yeah, again, we need to stop being afraid of nuclear energy and realize its potential. But nobody um, Other than that, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, all the all the socials, YouTube, everything else. Um, and I'm just going to shout out Hans's panel tomorrow. I'll be on that tomorrow. I, I and, like uh, Hans a lot. Hans, you're awesome. Hans is great. And remember, yeah, there's brother. tons more after this. There's tons more content. Uh, Stick around. Thanks tonight, for having us. Uh, it won't affect my ability to moderate you. Uh, I am very excited. So thank you so much. So good. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Dylan. We're going to throw it over now to Dim Mama. Why, yes. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think that uh, it's pretty simple. If you're if you're willing to consider things like uh, uh, jokingly or not jokingly invading the UN or uh, imposing, you know, population control across the globe of humans, um, I think that you should be willing to consider taking a bus or at least consider other solutions that might be somewhat in that ballpark. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. A lot of people got really mad because, um, I had a whole bunch of points that I, I waited and lined up for, but I guess that's neither here nor there. Uh, making conservatives angry is something I do all the time with my presence. Um, so yeah, uh, it was really interesting. My name is Demon Mama. If you enjoyed what you saw, come on by demonmama.com forward slash live. Um, we always take questions afterwards and, uh, I've, I've had a wonderful time being here discussing these, uh, high level ideas. And I sure hope that everybody will, uh, consider riding the bus someday because, uh, otherwise we might not have a planet.
which would suck. Okay, you gotta throw it over to Connor. All right. Um, so to address Su uh, Supreme specifically, um, I'm sorry that you're Doomer. Um, I have a child, so I can't afford to be Doomer. We gotta figure this out. Um, so whether that's uh, you know mixed economy capitalism, state intervention, technological intervention, whatever we need to do, we need to do it. Um, and no, we gotta we gotta ride this shit out to the bitter fucking end. But Hans because I, I hate to admit this, uh, but we're all mortal. Um, so even if Brave we got a perfect baby. planet, we would all die in like 50 years. So why not figure out some cool shit while we're on our way out? Um, so just to address the, the population control meme while uh, we're at it, um, one of the fastest ways that you can see uh, globally that we reduce birth rates is by raising standards of living and providing people with birth control. Um, so I'm not talking about pointing a gun at anybody. I'm basically just uh, literally talking about making, like literally bringing them to a Western standard of living in a way that doesn't destroy the planet and oh, then okay. handing them sure. condoms. That way uh, okay. they want to be fucking, oh my God, apartment dwelling coomer dickheads like Hans over here. Um, so there are solutions. We can find them. <laughs> I do love Hans, but he is an apartment dwelling coomer. Um, and then I just As wanted to pass. I. Yeah, I just wanted to pass this on. Um, so uh, Firefly and Serenity are some of the most like wholesome sci-fi TV shows uh, ever made. Um, they're the same TV show. And it's basically like the, uh, the the way world history works out in this universe is China and the United States actually marry as bipolar uh, powers does, in that, the world. That's not it. Um, and I think that's ultimately what needs to happen. Uh, we can't, but, we but can treat a, them like adversaries that ends up leading to in a the huge short war. term because they're doing some really fucky shit. Um, but ultimately, we do That's, need to think about how do to we war. survive uh, the next that, century. That leads to brutal um, war. So even if we the main characters are all rebellion, genocide, and other fucky things that they're doing, then we still need to figure out how to live together and hopefully massive. Wait, the, like the main together. characters in that so, show are rebels. For the outro, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I am a politics nerd. I'm a science fiction nerd. I am a military veteran, and I am a law enforcement veteran. So I talk about all of those things in reaction to popular media he or debates or Twitch panels or whatever. I do a whole bunch of random shit. Okay. Right now, I'm breaking down the Bo Burnham Inside special, which is very popular. Um, so uh, if you want to check out any of that stuff, go into YouTube, type in Counterpoints, Common Spelling. I should be the second most popular with a or second most popular channel with a similar name. I also participate on the Mask Off. Um, podcast, which is uh, with uh, Tiberius D and Samantha Banana. Um, so if you check out like Tiberius D on Twitch on Sundays, we do like a two-hour show from nine to eleven. Um, so if any of that interests you, please come check us out. Uh, it was a blast. Yeah, as always, exactly. Dylan. I know. And, um, just for the conservative censorship, I think we proved tonight that conservatives cannot behave themselves and are therefore biased. Uh, uh, like liberals, liberals who control the media are biased against us and shut us down and silence us. And I think that was proven statistically tonight with all the conservatives getting fucking nuked. Thank you. So, I just want to say a few things. Number one, inside, that Bill Burnham wasn't that good, okay? You're all overplaying it because you agree Get with the, the political. Get the fuck out of it here. It wasn't good. I couldn't <laughs> even finish it, okay? I couldn't even finish the special. It was not that good. That's okay, the first it wasn't thing that, that I... good. Okay, okay. Like, no, 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 no. the internet no, no, was no, a banger. No, just that one oh, song. Yeah. Okay, no. cool. He made one good. Okay, if I write yeah. a good song, that doesn't make a good special. Okay, I'm not saying it did. If I make a good sandwich and cover it in feces, it doesn't make it a good sandwich. Okay, like so, I mean, it was okay. It was, okay. Piece, it was okay. It was a unique, like artsy type piece. But the reason you like it is because you agree with it politically. Now, that's the first thing I want to say. No, the I like it because thing... I'm emo. That's yeah, why okay, I like okay. it. Cool. Yeah, it's very yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's cataract. Kind of very... I think. Edgy, you want you play. Oh, you want to live. I haven't gotten a good for, picture. Uh, I haven't good Warhammer universe. I understand. Good visual. It, okay? Now, but look, I think so. That's the first thing I want to say. Second thing I want to say. I saw Vosh in chat earlier. Vosh, you couldn't abide by hippy dippy championship rules. You couldn't respect the business which built you and gave you the luxurious life you emo live today. Emo points. Yeah. I want to see emo points. Champagne socialist. So now, next week, next Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're going to be having a hippy dippy rumble. And it's going to be great. It's going to be a hell of a show. And I hope everybody tunes in to see a new person crowd. Somebody with more respect for the business, hopefully, than Vosh. Maybe someone like Jimmy Dore. Someone respectable. Maybe uh, maybe some maybe. gray zone people. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe a Charlie Kirk type. Maybe lecture fan. I think it's damn fucking near time that lecture fan gets a W in this business uh, as somebody who's been carrying the conservative flag for so long. Anyway, I will see you guys next Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And for those who care, I'll be playing D&D tomorrow. I might stream it. I might not stream it. If I don't stream it, I'll I'll blast somebody else's link. 
See you guys later. Gonna raid you all. Thank you all for tuning in to Hippy Dippy. Love you all. See you next Friday. Love you then. Taste and poggers. That was so much fun. Nice. I gotta oh, get God. in on D and D set. Bye everybody. Vosh, Vosh if you're. All right. Hold on a second, everybody. Hold on a second, everybody. Hold on a second. Gotta fix everything up. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Hold on a second. Don't go anywhere. We're not. There we go. Bam. Well, that was fun. That was fun, wasn't it, everybody? Wait. I'm back. I'm back. That was fun. That was fun as fuck. Yeah, I, I, fucking, cr I fucking crunched it tonight, didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I?